आनंद हेलो डॉक्टर रेने यू आर नाउ कनेक्टेड टू द ऑडिटोरियम यू हैव डॉक्टर श्रेनिक एट द अदर एंड यार रेने गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाउ आर यू आई एम आई एम फाइन आई होप यू आर जेट लैग एंड एवरीथिंग यू आर ओके नाउ टू गो हेड Yeah we can hear you very well Rene yeah can I, have, can I bring that table here Can you please tell us Okay I'm just preparing the instrument that I'm going to basically use because these are too many here Okay Let me see what rasters I have Anand till is he preparing uh, is Eric is ready uh, about? just about getting ready sir okay and by the time i am saying sudhir raval is ready can we just uh, i don't think him? dr raval is still in the theater okay we okay. will just find out sir okay no problem that's fine so rene after how long time are you doing a laparoscopic surgery or is it are you really doing or frequently using it how many years ago no how many times uh, yeah what time gap or uh, you still operate regularly the laparoscopic surgeries laparoscopy no more okay perfect all right डॉक्टर रेने सर वील प्रॉब्ली लीव यू ऑन द ऑडियो फॉर अ फ्यू मिनट्स वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू डेली डॉक्टर रावल इज कनेक्टेड डॉक्टर रावल डॉक्टर सुधीर रावल प्लीज कैन यू हियर मी यस सर वी कैन हियर यू सर सो आई एम सिटिंग ऑन कंसोल ऑन मंत्रा रोबोट दिस इज द पेशेंट ऑफ ऑर्गन कंफाइंड सी ए प्रोस्टेट डिटेल्स आई विल टेल यू इन ए फ्यू So I'm, we are planning a uh, entire approach, uh, radical prostate me. Can you give me the control? Do you have my video? Uh, so this, yeah, Doctor Sudhir Raval. Yes, Doctor Shah. Yeah, can you please show us from outside? See, rather than inside, first show us outside the mantra. How okay. different it is before we really proceed for the case. We would like to see what are the. console how is it can if anybody can show us that part okay i'll i'll show you yeah please please have external view okay ye ye saath mein le jao okay yeah do you have external view yeah, yeah, yeah excellent we can we can see perfect <laughs> and i must say the quality of uh, video is also pretty good so yeah we are pretty happy you can see there four modular arm right right One is the camera arm two and three. There are four modular arm. Right. Camera arm is between the legs. Okay. And the which has the um, uh, hot shear is uh, on the uh, right side of the patient and uh, arm two and three on the left side of the patient. Okay. So same docking as we do in uh, intuitive, except that the arm two, which is uh, 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 fenestrated bipolar, okay. come here. That. 
port is bit above than um, uh, than the arm one wherein whereas in uh, in in uh, intuitive they are almost the same level you can see here Correct. there's the umbrella for camera there's the uh, arm two for uh, fenestrated bipolar so, so this is bit above and we keep it so that there is no clashing uh, what uh, are the port size over here 8 8 mm all are 8 mm 8 so same like xi xi has got the same 8 mm all and are, can you put camera in any of the port is it so or is it fixed the ports are right now it is fixed because the arm which has the camera is bit different the arm which have the okay okay so it's only uh, we can put like an one uh, one port only uh, probably they will come up with the this yeah. option correct 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 yeah okay so uh, we have a 3d view for show that for the assistant okay. and this is 4k or hd okay. hd right now it is hd okay. but they have a 3d also with us and uh, but the, the for assistant you they see 3d view uh, whenever no, we operate no that's really good that that's good okay yeah. now camera is articulating that they know right. so right now we have 30 degree up and down we can do it from here only this is olympus flexible camera oh okay okay mm -hmm. so uh, shall i go ahead uh, yeah please do you have now now show uh, show us your console set that also looked little different to us so just if you can share and yeah how so that this, this is the 3d uh, you know monitor which okay. is open okay and so then these are the hand control which they have changed to pincher grip now okay as in 70 but they did have the you know uh, uh, palmer grip which we were using before uh, this type of uh, uh, seems to be some internet issues is my voice is clear in between it got yeah the transmission was paused but yeah now it is back yeah now we are we can see you correct hand rest uh, here okay doctor uh, doctor sudhir is there any way they can give you a caller mic or something sir no no you have caller mic huh? because this will be picking up a lot of the external noise you have caller mic okay they, they don't have it Oh, right now they have it. Okay. Yeah. Anand, till that time, can we go to Eric? Okay. Dr. Ravel will keep watching yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We sure. are leaving you on the audio for a few minutes. Okay. While I start surgery, okay? Yeah, please, please, you can start. Yeah, we, we, are, we are watching you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sir, on uh, the middle screen, on the 3D, we'll just press in the case first. Okay, okay. On the right-hand side. Uh, moving on to the second case. 66 year male patient presented with complaint of voiding difficulty since 2 months and burning maturation since 2 months patient was vitally stable and in the digital rectal examination there was normal anal tone grade 1 firm non tender prostate patient's psa levels were 16.96 ng per ml and psa density was 0.56 ng per ml patient was further subjected to mp mri with pirates grading The uh, MRI was suggestive of prostate 30 cc and a heterogeneous hypointense 16 by 12 mm nodule on the right side at the apex and the mid level of the prostate. There was another 6 by 4 mm nodule at the transition zone on the left side, also at the apex. This was a Pirates 3 lesion. Patient was further subjected to tr transrectal ultrasound guided prostate biopsy, which was suggestive of prostatic adenocarcinoma, Gleason grade 4, Gleason score 8, 4 plus 4. Uh, 12 out of 12 cores were positive. tumor positive core 2 out of 2 with total tumor volume 70% in the metastatic workup bone scan showed no evidence of skeletal metastasis the final diagnosis comes down to carcinoma prostate primary 30 cc adenocarcinoma gleason grade group 4 gleason score 8 4 plus 4 high risk stage t2c n0 m0 the plan is laparoscopic extra peritoneal radical prostatectomy by dr eric mendren sir uh Dr. Shanik, probably we'll get some opening remarks from Dr. Eric. Yeah, please. We are now please. connected to Dr. Eric. Yeah. I will show a quick glance of Dr. Eric on uh, screen number three. Professor Eric, good morning. Hello. Yeah, just a minute, sir. We'll just yeah, check yeah, out no the mic. No problem. That's fine. 
Yes, Dr. Eric, you're on. Can you hear us? Yes, sir, we can hear you loud and clear. Great, so good morning to everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you, with all the team. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, thank you for the assistance. So we'll, show, uh, we'll, we'll try to show you tomorrow, today, uh, research uh, access uh, for uh, yeah, yeah. doing uh, yeah. laparoscopic uh, radical prostatectomy. Yeah, yeah. You see that it's a uh, uh, huge yeah. tumor with uh, yes. uh, an A, T2C. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yes, sir. Uh, we won't do any, any nerve sparing yeah. because okay. of the okay. welcome, yeah. welcome, sir. We will do a lymph node dissection oh. and I tr will try to show you uh, how to, to, to deal with this tumor. So first, Middle first thing I will, Aapko uh, I will have to, yeah. to create the space and for this, I use a, a, a scope, which is a zero degree scope. Already, I have placed a needle, various needle, two fingers above the tubic bones, just to inflate the space. And the abdominal cavity is empty. And I place already the pulse. I will explain you with a shitty pathway. I mean, I, I stay for two centimeters under the skin, and then, then I go towards the, the space. And when I will step, I don't know if you see very well. When you start, you will see immediately that this typical space. Have you the internal view or not? Yeah, we have, we have view. Yeah, internal view. Immediately, I am in the right space. And like if it was my finger, with the scope, I will create a space. And slowly, I will enlarge. Mm. And my first lump mark will be to find the the needle. You will see very soon. Uh, sir, actually he is doing this under 2D, not under 3D. Normally I use a, a 3D, but they have no, uh, they have no scope, uh, no uh, solid scope. Oh, zero degree, is it? And, uh, okay. So, so I start to do the, uh, the creation of the space with this scope, and then during the surgery I will show you so, I will click the lens, I will show you the first one now, can we place a little bit more uh, trend and position, you see the first trend mark is in place, that you see it now, here, so you, you have just to enlarge your, and the second one mark will be really quite quick to find, it will be to find the, the pubic bones. So, a very warm welcome and good morning to all the uh, delegates present. Uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, we welcome you to this uh, program and kickstart the program. To chair the first session, uh, may I invite Professor Ajay Kumar sir, Professor Mahesh Desai sir, Professor S.K. Singh sir on the first row. So, uh, for, uh, for the audience, uh, the center screen is a 3D screen, presently it's in 2D, therefore uh, you see uh, a blurred vision. Uh, moment he gets into the space, it will again be projected in 3D. On the right side of the uh, auditorium, we have the SS Mantra and a parallel screen is on the left side. So, these two are uh, transmission from Delhi uh, and uh, you... Uh, one transmission on, on the left screen, left of the auditorium and the right of the stage. They are from Delhi. Yes. The one on the right left side is from auditorium. Delhi. Left. Uh, and on the stage, the left of the uh, stage is uh, transperitoneal uh, prostatectomy, laparoscopic prostatectomy being done by uh, Dr. Rene Sotelo. Okay. We will make the 3D into a 2D for the time being. Yes, yes. So, sir, uh, uh, Mr. Anand, can we go to uh, Dr. Eric's theatre because he is... We have a Dr. Eric. Yes. Sir, please, uh, please uh, carry on. Right now, I, I don't need to be connected, okay? So, they, they can... I, I will... Yeah, can I have some energy? Because I don't know the situation. Okay. So, let, let us connect to Dr. Rene's theatre. We have a Dr. Rene. Dr. Rene, Professor Desai is speaking to you. How are you? 
Hi Rene, how are you? Good. This, this, this is Mahesh Desai. Maestro. Oh. How are you? Good, Aligo. <laughs> So what is what is happening now? Uh -huh. uh, as they sort it out, can we go uh -huh. to Dr. Can Ravel? Can we go to Dr. Sudhir Ravel? Yes, sir. We are with Dr. Ravel. Yeah, Professor Ravel. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. yeah. Sir, morning. Hello, Sudhir. Good morning. Morning, sir. How are you? No, this is Mahesh Desai. <laughs> I know, sir. I can recognize your voice. <laughs> well, such an great singer. I shyer to nahi. I am using sir so, mantra now. So tell, tell me, tell me the. Um, um, uh, about your equipment, uh, sir. My, how I'm how do you find it when you are using it? I find it good uh, value for money, and then the way these guys are working is an Indian thing, which is coming up very well. Though we do not have a CT scan and MRI in this country, but at least we have made the robot, which uh, the which is actually having a lot of young engineers, which are involved with this robot. So. Just to, uh, you know, make this happen, uh, we have worked hard with them and we have got a lot of suggestions. So right now I am using the hand control, which is pincher group, uh, pincher grip, as you see with the Da Vinci. Yeah. You, uh, you are on the posterior side, right? Posterior yes, approach. In this left seminal vesicle. Yeah. I have done... Uh, the vision is very good here, what you can sir. see. Thank you, sir. And clarity is also that. good. Even uh, Ridges is pairing using this robot and uh, recently we did even robotic veil okay. using mantra. And so, that's uh, just to make that it, it works in any, you know, surgery. Being used in cardiac setup, in uh, GI setup, regularly in other center. Uh -huh. We are using it in uh, uh, prostate, bladder, and uh, kidney. Suction is As used by your assistant and then you have a two sir. arms and the one is in have, yeah. result of the retraction. Yeah. yeah okay. Yes, sir. The three. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, yeah. yeah standard. Yes, just like one, not Da Vinci. Yeah. They have option of using four, fifth arm also if somebody yeah. wants. We recently showed uh, live surgery in Ludhiana also in, in North Zone uh, conference, which Agarnak organized. That was prostate only. We missed you, sir, in uh, SRS Melbourne. We were hoping that we'll see you. This robot was there in the exhibition. And the machine has gone to now uh, Johns Hopkins. Oh, I see. Hmm. We invite Mallikarjun sir to chair the session. Audience should. Mallikarjun is here only. Yeah. Yeah. Are you standing? You should chair. Sit down. So you want to shift to. Yeah, yeah please go to. Yeah. Anand, can we go to Rene's or? Yes, sir, sure. We are now with Dr. Rene. Is it, is it middle skin, is it? So, Rene? Yes. So, you are doing the. Uh, uh, yeah, we have dropped the bladder. Okay. 
Yeah. Right. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rene, we'll get back to you on the audio. Dr. Eric, you're on. I will, I will come back uh, later, please. You'll I'm just creating the space. Okay, sir. Thank you. We're back with Dr. Rene. Is Rene, is there more additions there? So you can see the pubic bone, right? Yeah, I'm seeing the left. Yeah. We have the iliac vein here. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. And then. Do you do the lymph node dissection earlier or in later? Case, in this case, it's not indicated. It's less of six, what I understand. Okay. Six. Dr. Rene, what energy are you using? It's an ultrasonic energy by Covidian? Okay. I always prefer to do open access. Uh, and you prefer anterior first? You ever do posterior first, or I you can do posterior, but I feel that laparoscopy is easier. Okay. Okay. To anterior approach. No, oh, it's a beautiful vision. It's pretty good. The section here. No, no. I, I, have a, I have a question. This is a very common practice when we look for a ra radical prostrectomy and the moment we drop the bladder, we see these hernial orifices coming up very, very prominent or a subclinical hernia which was undetected prior to surgery which is coming evident at that point of time. It's a proven fact that all these patients, majority of them will come back with an inguinal hernia six months down the lane or eight months down the lane. I just wanted to have an idea, how are we going to see? It now in the Rene Soti also, I think there is a right-sided uh, right hernia or a hernial sac which is very evidently seen. How are you going to manage these cases? May sir, you can start with you. This sir. Sorry? Sorry, what's the question for me? Yeah, of course, you can, I please. Couldn't, I couldn't hear because some, there was something here in the room. No, we, saw, we see these hernial sacs which get exposed the moment we drop the bladder. How are you managing them? Most I, 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 usually I repair the hernias. If I see the hernias, I, I comb all the way up, mm -hmm. make a pocket with the peritoneum, and then at the end I put a mesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when I cover the hernia, I put a mesh around the hernia. Yeah. And then I put a mesh with the peritoneum. But uh, I repair the hernias. You so, repair the hernias yeah. on the table. Yeah. So I you'll put back the you'll put you'll put a mesh and put back the bladder in place then. Yeah. So that the peritoneal cover to the mesh comes in. Yeah, I have not seen any problem doing re simultaneous repair of the area. So right. people doesn't do it because they feel that you can get some urine there. Oh yeah, that's it. Not. Nah. Well, I've started doing one thing is if I have one sided, I extract the uh, prostate through that incision and repair the hernia openly. 
<laughs> that is what I have been doing. So instead of giving a, a final steel incision, I give an incision in the inguinal area and extract the prostate there and repair the hernia at that point. That's a good idea. Very good that's idea. a good idea. So that's what I have been doing in the recent past. Yeah. Really good idea. Really good idea. What I do is I, I reduce it. Malli, hernia nahi hai ta aisa nahi karta hai na? Hernia hai ta. Now what I do is um, I reduce the hernia and see how big is the hernia. If it is a small hernia, then I'll take. The um, incidence of hernias after prostatectomy is higher than normal population. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I said. We do miss many smaller hernias which are small bibinocele with a weak posterior wall, and they do present with hernia in the post-operative yeah, period. No, but it appears to be because the peritoneal resistance which is offered by the peritoneum covering at that area is lost the moment you drop the bladder completely. Okay, that's the reason why the incidence of hernia appears to be high. Now, what I do is um, I reduce the thing but I, I don't put a mesh. I do the conjoint in order. You so just re repair, the, repair, repair of the hernia. hernia. I bring the conjoint tendon to the inguinal uh, ligament and then put an interpret stitches and um, that's Wonderful. it. No, I think and if we, the idea is now is there should be an active attempt to repair a large or a fa fairly decent obviously looking uh, defect in the posterior wall of the uh, inguinal canal which will present as a hernia in a future. Options now as uh, uh, as um, um, Rene was talking about putting a mesh and covering it with the bladder, the risk of exposure of the uh, mesh to the urine is always there. That's one possibility. The second being is like Dr. Desai was talking about making a stitch in the posterior itself and repairing the inguinal opening at that point. Third option as I was practicing was to give an incision on the inguinal canal on that side, deliver the deliver the prostate from there and repair the head that, at that point. So, okay, can we go without to mesh? Where, where I do without the, mesh. Can we go to MS, Professor Eric? MS surgery. Yeah. Right. Time, Dr. Rene, we'll get back to you on the audio. Dr. Rene, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Eric? Yes. We are now connected to you. So we conclude that you preferred lymph node before the prostate, right? Be pro yes. Prostate dissection, yes. correct. But you only do the obturator fossa or you do up to the... How much um, lymph node dissection you do? Would you restrict yourself to only obturator fossa or would you do a little extended?
So the question, uh, Eric, is what are your boundaries of lymph node dissection that you do normally? They need a bipolar. How to cut? He, he needs uh, a bipolar. Can we go to right? Dr. Sudhir Rawal Zohar? Sure, sir. Yeah. We have with Dr. Rawal. Yes, it's connected. Eh? Mic is connected. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So, the, actually, uh, we dissected the posterior uh, dissection on the right side, left side, and there was a small venous bleed. So, I put a gauze piece here and then they are cleaning the camera. And there is a small problem coming in the left hand uh, that was, uh, uh, what is that, monopolar, uh, sorry, bipolar. Uh, they are sorting it out. We have uh, engineers sitting with us. Uh, you know, there is have software and hardware thing in this robot. Dr. Rawal, can you ask your team to please give us the endoscopic image? They have muted it out. Okay, and the endoscopic image, please. On, please. Avinesh, you have blanked out the endoscopic image coming to us. Endoscopic, they Right, thank you, sir. It's on. You have that? Yeah, we have image. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, so, what, what is happening in the left? Uh, bipolar uh, penetrated. I was not happy with the movement, the way it was working. Though right uh, monopolar is working very well. So these guys, they have software and hardware and actuator. So many things are there. Some thing I have learned from them. So he is just uh, changing the dimensions. Uh, you probably don't have external view. In a monitor, the side monitor, they actually change, uh, make a lot of things in their software, which. Uh, sorts out these problems. These are uh, minor teething problem problem which occurs uh, in in robot in in new robot always. It was there with the Da Vinci also, if you remember, and it is there with the uh, Hugo also. There are so many safety problem with Hugo that it it hangs like anything. This was happening in the beginning of uh, uh, mantra also. That is why I could never. Uh, do the live surgery, but uh, right now they have fixed it up, but it's still you know, because they try new things, so these uh, problems they come up. So he has just done that. I'm just using it and I'll yeah. see if it goes fine. Yeah, Dr. No, Rawal, it, it looks a pretty yeah. good dissection posture. Can you please tell everyone where, how do you decide the line of your peritoneal incision? How do you, before, just come no, back to yeah, the original incision. Around, incision yeah. Give me turn above the Rectovesicle reflection. You see, they are around more yeah. than two, two and a half centimeter of the. If I have to do cystectomy, I'll go here in this plane. If I have to do prostatectomy, I'll go here. Even for the uh, ridges sparing, I'll go in this plane uh, around two centimeter of the reflection of the uh, rectovesicle peritoneum. Yeah, beautiful. And, uh, I think I even for anterior dissection, I I first do posterior and then go drop the bladder down. Looks a bit better. Uh, if, uh, I don't know. Let me use it. Uh, Suraj is asking whether it is good or not. So, these things are there. With the new robots, this has happened every time. And even the, I, I met these German guys, their robot is still not there in the conferences, but they come with a stall, having the photo, videos, everything. They also ask me what about software hangover and uh, those problems. So they, they are there. But then we have very good team, and they are all Indian young engineer from everywhere in the country. They are the one who sort this out. We have just done something as looks okay to me right now. But let's see how it goes. But recently, uh, day before yesterday, we did uh, a robotic bail also using mantra, and that was flawless. Without any problem, we could do. Okay, yeah. At that, that time, we changed the gripper. This uh, pincher gripper, I am more used to because we are operating for last 10 years on uh, uh, intuitive. So, I only push them for these gripper. And see here now. And I will try to save his nerves. He is a young, young guy with a Gleason's score 3 plus 4 and having PSA only 9.
this place is always you know tricky when you go laterally can you hear me yeah we can yeah, hear yeah, you yeah. okay many people uh, they drop the neurovascular bundle from here even in the anterior approach i saw one guy who is working with the dipin parik he does the same thing you can drop the neurovascular bundle a bit more dissection here and when you come anti from left side when you drop the bladder then it becomes easy So here, up to what level would you try to go up to apex? Uh, what most is your of the know? time. Yeah, most of the most time. Most of the time. Yeah, 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 very true. Possible, I'll do go you, up to the apex. Do you change the camera here or are you still happy with this? 30 no, hours? No, yeah. yeah. I, so I, I do ridges sparing removing the prostate with zero degree only. Oh, okay. But okay. they go for 30 up. Okay. I, okay. Once I have removed the prostate, then I change the camera. Okay, okay. So this is, I think, enough for posterior section no he's got control all right i'll drop the bladder down you see you can see the lateral dissection also you can do here yeah and when you can in the anterior this will actually drop the vessel uh, neurovascular bundle easily I'll, I'll i'll drop the bladder now now are you are you going to go anterior yes yes, yes. Okay, Anand, can we go to the uh, Eric in between? Yes, sir. We are with Dr. Eric. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We can see uh, you have dissected out the lymph node lateral to the iliac vessel. Yes. Okay. Very nice. Okay, you see that now we arrive at the level that normally we should find it, find the obturator nerve there. You see immediately. Yeah. Always the same. So when it's done. Obturator now. So, what is your upper limit? You see here, zoom a little bit, zoom. Okay. Okay, you see, probably this is the, the vein. And so, we have to pay attention to the ureter. Ureter there, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, now that means that in between, this is the nodes. So, I will have to, to, to finish the dissection of the nodes. And the most difficult time is here, at the level of the... Uh, taking a stitch now Expose here. Yes. Yes, sir. Stop, stop with your grasper. Stop with your grasper. Come, come here. Expose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expose. Just expose. 
This will be the end of the, the, the difficult dissection. We arrive at the level of the primitive uh, iliac artery. So I will stop there. Okay. So you are going up to the bifurcation of the yes. iliac vessel. Okay. You see? But here you have, you have to pay attention to the urethra. That's why it's very, very important to, to dissect before cutting to be sure that you have done the good job and then cut. Because I, I remember one case with the injury of the urethra at this level because yes. you don't pay attention. So you have to pay really attention to everything at, at that time. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Attention because to everything can be uh, <coughs> similar to, to, to the lymph node, uh, and uh, it can be also like uh, like, like the urethra. So we have, you have to clean the legs because you have done a mistake here. I want to be straight, please. I want to have a scope straight. I think the scope is a little smudged in one I think, side. I think he is using an endo eye, a flexible scope. With the flexible yes. scope, when he is. Yes. When you are you know, passing it through, uh, through that trucar, it, it smudges onto the, onto the valves of the trucar and becomes hazy. It's not very easy to use. Mm. Malik sir, your 3D is okay there? Yeah, it yeah. is okay. Very nice, very nice, Anand. You know, there's a very good dissection, quite a bit. Uh, here, expose with your grasper, expose here with your grasper. Okay, expose here for Push, yes, push, push, push. Open your grasper, open it like this, expose. Yes. Eric? Eric Bolo? Let's have a, a Abhishek. Can we have a hand raise on whosoever is doing a laparoscopic radical prostatectomy now? How many of you are doing a laparoscopic radical prostatectomy? Okay, fine. I, I, let me have an opinion. How many of you will ligate a DVC before cutting or 
Suture it after cutting. How many you like it before cutting? What like it? DVC. No, Dr. Neeraj, I suggest you clean the trocar. The camera trocar. Just yes. clean it up before putting it in, sir. Everything is replicable. The only thing is you need to have a critical volume to be passed. The problem here is not replicability or ab ability of the surgeons. The problem here is the volume of the disease or volume burden, what is necessary to make you perfect. You have, see once upon a time that was lack of knowledge or possibility training. Now it is everything there, virtual or physical or exposure wise. But the problem is you need to have that critical number of patients to pass on for you to become perfect or say do reasonably good but what is the definition it's about 20 50 what process no, do you expect again, a year I this is say. again this is a very very generalistic statement which cannot be equated Correct. with no, everybody roughly, for yeah, a surgeon for I one person it may be 20 patients as a uh, as a threshold for some other it may be 50 patients Correct. no I, ideally you know before you start you have to practice it in the in the lab to get a certain marks. There is an exam. And after reaching that efficiency in lab, you go to the live surgery. And the live surgery is a little different. And then you, once you are done, every 20 or 30 cases you do, you improve your ability to do that. But it is a constant learning process. Absolutely. Because each patient is different. different. And each situation is different. And you have to modify that. As he says, that he's, he's taking care of the ureter. So he's taking care of the ureter. But ureter does not lie in the same position in every patient. So you have to be careful with that. Now, for example, he's, he's, he's uh, doing the dissection and he has done a beautiful dissection. At the last part, there is something... Um, Bleeding while he is trying to do the uretric uh, this thing. When there is a bleeding occurs, your anatomy, your vision, your speed, everything changes. And, and, and you need to time yeah, how he handles like this complication is really worth learning in the live surgeries. Well, I don't think this is a complication. This, this is a part of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Procedure. correct dissection. Correct. Dissection. Difficulties. Yeah. So this is the difference between the live surgery and the surgery in the um, lab. You know. There's always a bleeder in the angle between uh, into the lymph nodal mass between the internal and the external iliac artery in the depth the moment we pull that lymph nodal mass it starts bleeding and we try to get into that which will never be seen because we are seeing in a different direction altogether now if you see on the rene side there was a uh, bleeding, bleeding but now if you see that he has controlled it and the dissection is going on yeah can we go to the uh, professor rene's or we are with dr rene Rene, yes. we saw you um, um, dissecting and controlling the uh, oozing and uh, just let us know exactly what was... Uh, there was, I was trying to, it's a very small prostate mm. and it has a lot of veins around and then uh, here and then, uh, okay, let me grab this here and then doing that I get a sinus uh, vein yeah. and then I just was controlling that Okay, that one second. Yeah. Let me grab this here. Ready? Um, I mean, just to compare your experience in um, USA, um, most of the time we found that our average prostate in, uh, say, farming village is around uh, 12 gram, and in the um, uh, in um, uh, training village is around 24 to 30 grams. Very average prostate which we see is about 40, 50 grams maximum. You know. Occasionally, it is larger. So, in a small gram, if you have a malignancy... Yeah, it's, it's, it's very challenging sometimes in small glands. Because we need to find exactly... Uh, but basically, I try to go with retrograde, what I do now robotically. Mm. I do first the apex. Okay. So you have put a put a stitch there on the uh, uh, dorsal venous um, yeah, complex. Yeah, I put a suture there. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm just. 
you have dissected the side. I can see the levator and I. Now you can see the prostate. Yeah. Now are you going to open the bladder now, right? Now I'm going to open the bladder. Yeah. I just want to get a better. Are you going to do the nerve sparing? Huh? Are you going to do the nerve sparing? No, patient doesn't have anything to for the nerves. Okay. So, um, I, Rene, yes. what is your trick of um, selecting the incision on the uh, bladder and the prosthetic angle? Yeah, how, how do you how do you do that? Suppose if he has a medial lobe, large. Yeah, very important. If you have a medial lobe, you have to empty the balloon because if you have a medial lobe, the balloon will be giving you a false impression. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay, can I have my grasper? You don't move from here. Keep it like this, okay? Okay, can I have my other, my grasper now and the harmonic? You see, I did half of the dorsal vein. You see it here? Yes, yes, I can. We saw it. It's already transected almost. There's the urethra there. Yeah. Okay. And now, when you have a bleeding in dorsal vein, it's very important that you need to complete the transection. Yeah. If you don't complete transection, it's going to keep bleeding. Yeah. That's what I did. I transected and then I took care of the dorsal vein. If no, it's going to keep bleeding. Okay. And now, I'm just going to move the balloon here. Mm. Can you put it back? I'm just going to show you the balloon. Move it in. Can you disattach this? Sorry, can you disconnect this? And then, let me see the balloon here. Yeah, she can move here. Hold here. I'm just showing the balloon. Yes. Here. It's a very small Yeah, process. we can see the movement. You're going to see it in one second here. This is the balloon here. Yeah. It's a very small. You can see that good. Here. Yeah. You can see the. So that's your yeah. angle. Okay. Other way, other way. Other way, see, one of the biggest challenges in any radical prostatectomy is what Dr. Desai asked is identifying where exactly is the junction between the bladder and the prostate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Important that you, you don't want to be not into the prostate. In the prostate. Yes. So there are three ways of looking into how to uh, you identify. One of the things is as we traditionally see the balloon which is being pulled in and see the junction at that point. One of the disadvantages in that is having a median lobe or one side lobe become bigger and the other side being smaller, you will not be able to judge it very well. The second way to identify is going to be tracing the peboprostatic ligaments going across onto the prostate. The junction where the two meet each are is the junction where the the the, uh, the bladder uh, the bladder and prostate junction is there. It is imminent all the time. The peboprostatic ligaments will pass onto the prostate. The prostatic element of the peboprostatic element will meet at a point of bladder neck uh, that is uh, that's bladder and prostate junction. Every time you can demonstrate that. That's the second way of getting into it. The third way is going to be coming from the lateral aspect. Identify the prostatic pedicle or the dorsal venous complex which drains laterally and come from that side. What Eric Mandron is doing, trying to do is getting that window there which previous surgery times I have demonstrated. Come from that area, you will be able to find a beautiful plane between the bladder and prostate and you reach the junction very easily there. So, three ways of identifying the junction. Okay. What is I mean, most can important? We, yeah, can we go to Eric, please? What is most important 
is before yes, sir. you do the if you do a transrectal sonography and if you visualize the lobe, median <sighs> lobe and lateral lobe, you measure from the median lobe, tip of the middle lobe to the uh, the the seminal vesicle, then you exactly know uh, when you open up which will be the safe way to go out. Probably yes sir. Dr. Malik, we are with Dr. So Eric. Can see Eric, the yeah, Eric, we are with you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, Eric? Yes. So, I decided to show you the prostatectomy now. I, I will do the, the right side uh, there after. I've done the left side. Of, you see very well the left side of the uh, lymph node dissection. And just to show you the prostatectomy, we will do at the end the, the left side. So, here, uh, because it's a huge tumor, I, I open totally the endopelvic fascia. You see here that uh, I have already opened the endopelvic yeah, fascia. Yeah, correct. On the right side, it's totally done. Zoom, please, zoom. And you see that we arrive at the level of the, of the sphincter itself, somewhere here. So I will have to stop there, and then I will do exactly the sym symmetric thing. You will see that on the left side, probably it's a small phenolar artery here. So yeah, if I yeah. Can, I will, I will try to preserve it because it can va vascularize the, 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 the sphincter itself, exposed, yes. And here I have to open the endopelic fascia. You see it? Okay, it, is a, it is a separation of the endopelic fascia. Two layers of endopelic fascia are being separated. He is not dividing the endopelic fascia. That is the two ways. One side it goes onto the pelvic nerves under the levator fascia. Other side goes onto the endopelic fascia covering the prostate with the veins inside. That gives you a better nerve sparing. So this artery is one of the common cause of bleeding on this side if you are dissecting and if you are not taking care. The lateral to the prostate. No, this will enter yeah. into the DVC area at one point. Your right. ability to save it comes at that point. This, the lateral aspect can be saved very easily, but the medial aspect is going to be a trouble. I think it's so beautifully dissected. Yes. You can see the depth. Yes. That, that never comes into your picture most of the time. The thing that, that the other type is going anterior to the prostate and entering into the DVC area. That is the most common problem. Here we we'll stop. And now it's the time of the bladder neck. The bladder neck is the most difficult time. So here, so how to find it? Is, uh, normally you have to submerge of the physical picture. Also you have the top. The end of the top is, is uh, the size of it. Where is the, the, the bladder neck? And sure. also you can Why? Reason is so good and not so. I have a three vision. So yeah. I like to do. Have you vision reason? Reason is hard, but this is better. It's a little bit dry. 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 It's with your grasper now, you, you, grab, you grab here. Can you can re, retake this grasper if it's better? It's, it's okay? Okay. Very important to grab here and to lift. No, 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 no. Don't do suction. Don't do suction. Okay. Uh, Anand, can we go to the uh, Rene, please? He has already started. We are back with Dr. Rene. Yeah. yeah. Rene, you are now posterior yeah. to the bladder neck. Now, how do you decide uh, where to make an incision? This patient has a previous chirp. Yeah, this was yeah, a previous chirp. Yeah, we can see that. This more challenging to this find. This is more challenging to find, yes. And that's why I'm being very careful that I'm going straight down. But, you know, so when, you, when the patient has a TURP, the ureteric opening um, position changes, right? You have to... Um, Difficult. You, have yeah. it. you see it? Now on, uh, you are on the outside, seminal vesicles.
Malik, can you use so much of cotton? Yeah, can we go back to Eric, please? We are with Dr. Eric. Cottery in the bladder, sir. Or in if your sister has to do a big traction on the, on the red leg, okay. when you okay. do it with your robot, it's the force arm. No, no. Okay. I, I would I rather, I, everybody has got their own way of doing it. I would rather divide it with a monopolar, which gives the tissue plane much better than any of these sealers. Sealers, you'll go to a beautiful hemostasis, but the tissue texture is moulded completely because it is burnt at that point. A good monopolar, uh, for, for this thing with a sharp cut, gives the texture better and you will be able to visualize. You see, the problem is suddenly you see Rene, you, you, you realize, are we going through the prostate? Because the tissue looks so, it gets, it gets cooked like that in such fashion, though he is not going through that, but still it looks as if, are we going through the prostate? What I do, I use minimum cautery. I make a um, division clip and then cut it. Sir, that is medical. Uh, we are talking about the posterior yeah. bladder okay. neck, posterior yeah. bladder but neck. But Malik, monopolar also make it black. No, sir. You sure? Me? That's exactly what I'm saying. You take a monopolar, open the scissors, point them to the scissors. It uh, with a so coagulation. Eric, you will try to effect. preserve the bladder neck. The smaller neck, that would be the surface goal. area used to cut. No, but it in gets this you much better picture. Here, so you can see in very nicely. Like what you see in a. Uh, in, a, in a robotic, you open the scissor with the tip of the scissors or a, of, the, of the blade, you cut the thing, you will not see any charring there. No, but I would like you to show this um, the section here. In yes, the exactly. On the Eric Mandron. Eric, Eric is doing, is he's dissecting out all the muscles and keeping the mucosa intact. Mm -hmm. So you will have a very narrow… Narrow bladder neck. Narrow bend. Mm -hmm. I think this is the beautiful technique. Yes. Yeah. That is. That saves the blood, Nick. Okay. Very nicely seen. And then for a minute, can we go back to Rene? He's doing very good job. Yeah. Sure, sir. We have a Dr. Rene. Rene, you got the vast difference. I'm getting the only vast difference. Uh, we have some better. Rene, can you hear us? Dr. Rene? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So you cut the vas. And then as soon as I, I found the vas and the lateral, I stopped using the uh, harmonic. Okay. Because now I have the bottles here. You see it? Yeah. Okay. That's why another way. I stop now the harmonic and now I'm going clip scissors, clip scissors. Necessary to clip the vase, or can you do? I always clip the vase because I had a few occasions where this clip migrated into the anastomosis. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, um, I always try to clip it, but obviously, I don't know if it was that clip, but normally I have to be careful. When Did you ever had a migration into the anastomosis? Yeah, but it's not this clip. This not this clip. Migrations are clips maybe in the bundle, not this far. Okay. But I agree, you have to be careful at the end, if you see any clip when you're doing the anastomosis, remove them. Yeah. But there's an artery there always that I have yeah. to be very careful. Yeah, that is correct. Quick. 
tip of the seminal vesicle saved. That preserves the nerve. It's once upon a time, 30 years ago, the thought process, 20 years ago. Am I right, sir? Tip yeah. of the seminal vesicle Ma saved Ma Ma means. Menon said that. That's you, because you the, 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 the bundle will make a V shape end at that point. Yeah. And that's the reason why the tip is being saved. But you know, once you dissect, seminal vesicle think that's comes out so easily. Automatically, enough. sir. It doesn't and need you can to strip out all yes, the yes, tissue yes, without yes, damaging yes, it. Yes, yes. It's not necessary. Now here, because of the TRP, you know, there is, has to be some yeah, extravasation yeah, yes, yes, and then yes. it gives little fibrosis and um, uh, dissection. Re Rene, given a choice, when do you want to operate a post-TRP patient? Yeah. How, when do you want to operate a post-TRP patient? How long is the gap you want to give? In, in a post-TURP situation, there is thinning of uh, posterior bladder, relative thinning of posterior bladder plate, at least towards the neck. So, how do you judge that? It, uh, it shows up. We don't need to judge it. It obviously shows up once you cut it. No, so, before you cut it? I think ultrasound gives mm, you the very good picture. And then you have to be careful. See, the amount of cut you need to make may be a little, little less than what it is necessary, but that's okay. W would you scope these patients post-TURP to look at the location of ureteric orifices or you judge no. them only intraoperator? Intraop. And here he has not opened the mucosa at all. You know, he's just going by the side. Yeah, can we go back to Eric, please? No, he'll get, he'll get into the fossa where your uh, seminal vesicles Aran, are there. Yeah, yeah. The seminal vesicles yeah. There. We have a Dr. Eric. Yes. So, you see, I have in the first half, uh, lateral to the bed of neck. Hmm. You see it uh, perfectly. So, we have here, the seminal vesicle here. We have the bed of the there. We have the muscular parts covering the, blood, the seminal vesicle there. On, uh, top, 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 we have the bundle, okay? But here, in this case, we won't preserve the bundle. So I will, but if I have to preserve it, I have to, to transect there and then to, to, to follow the, the prostate itself. But here I won't, so I will place a demo clips. Uh. Right. We'll keep watching as well, sir. Uh, Dr. Ravel would like to talk to us. Dr. Ravel, you're on. Yes, Anandan. Yes. So, so uh, we have uh, opened the bladder and... Um, yeah, I have actually you see you. the urethra bladder neck. Yeah, yeah, I've saved some part of it. Um, I was actually wanted to talk to you about post TRP. Can you deflate the bladder and post TRP? I will always do the cystoscopy to see the where the uretic orifice are. And many times we do ridges sparing. In that, it's must actually to do cystoscopy. Know the what is the position. Sometimes you know it depends on who has done the TRP. Sometimes you get a very small bladder neck, sometimes you get that very big bladder neck. So, depending on that, you can take a decision, be careful when you are doing either ridges sparing or open prostatectomy or anterior prostatectomy, there is no, no problem. You will anyway see those, see the uretic orifice and all. So, we always prefer to do the cystoscopy. And here I have cut the anterior part of the urethra. I generally go from lateral and then come medium. And you can see that small bladder neck will be there. I have already done the posterior dissection. So, once you, I... Visu visualize the uretric opening or in this case it doesn't require? Because in you are this quite I, away. You are quite away. In this? No, sir. No. Yeah. I am quite away. Quite all right. Yeah. yeah. Ra Raval, sir, Eurasia. So ah, you are. Yeah. How comfortable you are doing uh, radius sparing by mantra? Uh, not that comfortable as I am with the uh, Da Vinci, but uh, it's not that you can't do. I have done already. Rather, Yura, just to update you, uh, day before yesterday, we did even robotic veil with uh, oh. mantra, and that went very well without any problem, uh, without any, you know, much uh, uh, like uh, for ridges sparing in two uh, case, in three cases. In one case, I had to do the anastomosis from anterior approach. Other two, I could do the from posterior approach. So this type of lateral dissection, you <clears throat> uh, with Da Vinci, you 
hardly I have seen you doing this, but in mantra you are doing like this. So is this the, the, the new? Well, I have recently started doing yeah. this yoga. Okay. It's not that uh, I don't do with the Da Vinci. I, I generally with Da Vinci most of the time we do the registered pairing. But if I am doing the anterior approach, I will do like this nowadays. But this actually makes you very secure that you are uh, in right plane. That's the only thing. You sir. already dissected the same the vesicle, so it will. Yes, sir. Easy to. So when I see the movement of the instruments when compared to Da Vinci, yeah. uh, you yeah. feel a little bit lagging or a little bit slow yeah. when compared to that. Uh, no, that, that's def definitely is there. You don't see those a smooth movement as you see with the your uh, uh, Da Vinci, but uh, they are better than laparoscopy and uh, they are more versatile than laparoscopy. And you know this uh, robot is evolving. If you see the uh, Da Vinci's earlier model in 2000, then uh, comparing to that which is now 23, 24 year old technology, uh, this robot is evolving and I, I am quite sure the way these things are going in the company and the way these things, uh, these guys are doing the good job. So things will be definitely improved and better. It's actually movement, the smoothness of movement depends on two things. One is the actuator which is hardware and then the software. So in actuator, they did have problem because of the pandemic, because the motors which are used in these robots, they are micro motors and they are only made in Switzerland. And uh, Da Vinci, they have gone on to the different type of actuator. You remember in the beginning they had in SIHD, the actuators were different. They changed for X and XI. Because they designed their own motors, patented them, and then they asked the in in company in Switzerland to make them it for them, and make those motors for them. So this is not an easy task, which takes time. And uh, company itself is working more on indigenous indigenization rather than you know uh, uh, depending on the foreign uh, uh, import, which actually causes a lot of problem many times. Sometimes the order is not correct. Sometimes you know, uh, uh, the thing they wanted is not there. So these things are going on. Recently they got something which is not up to the mark, so that they had to change. So it takes time then. Once it comes back, then it, it goes back, it takes time. But telekinetic, tele movements are there, which are quite okay. Sir. Yeah. Can we go back to Rene, please? Well, Dr. Ravid will get back to you on the audio. Oh. Thank you. Dr. Rene, we are back with you. Yeah, I'm doing now the, uh, the right side. <laughs> yeah, we, we can see very nice dissection and you are... Uh, I have here the uh, semi-vesicle. Yeah, yeah. We can see that. Um, I'm going to you off. You see it? Yes, yes. Scissors. Very clearly. Scissors. And then you can do that yes. when you. I always do first of the third. And then bring this carefully. And then you see his traction and contra-traction, and then you just release it on the rectum here. You see it? Yeah. Have you reached up to the apex? Not yet, but I'm close. Yeah, close to that. Because of the TRP, do you feel uh, tissue adhesions or dissection is a little difficult? Or is it? See the bundle here? Yeah. Keep this down. Come 
here. Beautiful. So you're going posterior laterals. Very nice. We can see the full anatomy. Your te telescope is zero or thirty degree. Yeah. Okay. Can we go back to Eric, please? We have a Dr. Eric. Yes. Give me a glass for this. Can we just clean the camera once, please? Now you're going to open the section. This is because I is kept it. Grab this, please. Grab this, please. Please, you wish. No, 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 no section. Normally, you should have a, a special section which is a uh, very small uh, section because here when when you do this retrograde to access, uh, you you collapse the, the, the space. Yes. Big section. So you have to have a, a special section which is just doing so a very small uh, movement and a very small uh, section to be sure. So, so, right. so, so this is a quite. Uh, Dif difference between the transperitoneal and extra peritoneal because you have to be very careful with suction otherwise whole um, thing collapses the vision gets obscured so i don't know if the vision is okay but here now we, we, i will show you no sir it's not sir can we just clean it we for one time please because are now and have you opened the bladder neck no not yet yes sir please sir Yeah, can we go back to Rene, please? Sure. We have a doctor, Rene. Nice going, Rene.
Just observation. You see it? Uh, yes. Now I'm going to switch my hand. Yeah. Scissors in my left hand. Mm. Okay. Scissors. You see it? Let me grab here. Can we clean this? Can I have a better glass for the other one that has teeth? Okay. And now, because the apex. If you do it with the right hand, you will transect the bundle. I'm grabbing it here. You see it? Yes, yes. Okay, we can see that letter. Yeah. Here we go. And now, I'm coming with my left hand. You see it? Yes. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, very true. So, we are used to trans rectal. We are used to So, so that is the thing. We are used to trans perineal. We are used to trans perineal. We are used to trans perineal. And it trans perineal, and they are used to it, but we are not used to it. And like that, if Mara Pashi Bijalako kept two office, we have a number. And that there is, and that there is a carriage, he applied a requirement plus one extra. Rene will come back to you. Can we go to Eric, please? Huh? We are with Dr. Eric. Yeah, yeah. And a software boy, and a software boy. Fusion okay. karwa noe ne? Fusion maate software hai. Remove it totally. Okay. Aata un pochi jo. So normally I used to fill everything more the the bladder neck, but it's not perfectly done. It's okay. Ah. Aha un pochi jo. Can we go back to Rene? He's just cutting the urethra. Dr. Rene? Okay. Yes. He, we so saw beautiful the whole urethra you have preserved. Excellent. You will hear a lot of applauds, Rene. You will hear a lot of applauds. Very nice, Rene. Okay, Anand, can we go back to Eric, please? We are back with Dr. Eric. Okay, so now we have done, you can see that we have done the, the bladder, the 
rather than dissection. And now we start to the second part, which is the most more easier. I always start in between the two vas. You see here, this is the left vas, and behind the left vas, immediately I will find the left signal vesicle. Yes. And at the tip, I will have here the WA fascia. So I, I just start like this, and I will here transect everything, lift down with your uh, suction, like this. Yes, to explode. Yes. Well, yeah. So here, we won't do any preservation, so I will just So, so these are two different techniques with, where uh, Rene clapped it and he... Clip, this is where you need a clip because there is a blood vessel going on at the tip of the seminal vesicle. Here, now we will, we will be able to go quickly because it's a uh, very uh, common surgery now, okay? You see the... the the exposition, now my assistant will grab the signal vehicle, okay, grab it. You see, it's very important to know exactly what your assistant has to do. If you want to do a good job, okay, perfect, you see perfectly now the exposition, okay. This is the end of the dissection of the... Keep the, the grasper, please. Don't suck. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, now it's done. You see, this is the left side is done. And uh, we have to do this the right side, and then we have to open. So at that time, you will, you will grab the left, the right vast different piece. Eric, I have a question. Why do you want to have that hemolock at that point? Is it because of a vessel into the seminal vesicle or any specific reason? No, you can see the blood vessels and lymphatic. Yeah, yeah, because if you have a lot of vessels, and if you can, uh, just with small coagulation, if sometimes you can have a really bleeding after. So uh, when I'm doing a nerve sparing, I, I will do a very small coagulation or very small clips mm -hmm. to preserve because here you have all the bundles coming, starting. I don't know. It's a, that makes a U U turn there and then descend below. Exactly. Yeah, that was a, that was a thing which was all the time discussed to preserve that artery and uh, that not to injure that U turn, not to use the diathermy there so that it doesn't. In some cases, most of the time, uh, I understand. That's, are you still doing it now? That's the reason why I'm asked it. Yes. You see the aspects outside of the aspects, the inside aspects. So you have, we have not, at that time I have not opened the, the denovillier fascia. No, you are. It's very important now to, to open the denovillier fascia at that time. Uh, I will just do this part because I, I, I won't preserve, but if I have to, to, to do a preservation, I will go very, very high. Here yes. I
stay in something. And now here, what is very important is to open, to open the denominator fascia. Okay, you see it very well. And I like to let about half centimeter of the denominator fascia. So I won't start there. Exactly. If I start there, it's to do intrafascia. I will do about one centimeter here. In exactly. No, one, one of the disadvantages of starting very, very close to the thing is you may end up in getting into the prostate. Yes, risk is too high. Yes, inside the prostate is high. Yes, exactly. Edge of the denonular fascia. Yes. I think they need a good tooth grasper there. If you have a good grasper. A tooth grasper, I would say. Here you see, if you do so, you, you find, and I always try to find the, 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 the medial dissection. Yes. And then I have to, to, to deal for the bundle. The rest of the bundle. On, on the medial part. You mean to say it's going to the center, come to the periphery laterally later. That's it. Don't go laterally first. You'll end up into the predicals. Okay, go. Great. Okay. Have it. So make your pedicle thinner and thinner. Thinner, thinner, thinner you know? and thinner. The yes, way. sir. From the center to the periphery. Yeah. yeah. And then if you have a that denominator fascia, you can use it for a broco stitch, you know. That is a... Yes. Strip the tissues across. You see, I start always mentally and, and then I go to the find really where it's just the layer. Okay, it's done now and now I have just to to to, to, di to dissect and to do the, the bundle. So if if I will do a preservation I will do mini clips there and cut. Here I will place emerald clips because uh, we have we have to we have to, to, to be large for the tumor. But it depends on what you have to do, okay? Very nice. That, that, that exposing that lateral surface of the prostate is wonderfully shown, Eric. Very nice. Okay, so now we'll show. So all, all we can do it with a uh, scalpel, or you can do it with a with, uh, with of clips, it depends, okay? Scissors. Uh, again, I, uh, one question. Again, about clips. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, number of times I wonder while you are cutting the dorsal venous, uh, this uh, neurovascular bundle, if you apply clip very close to the even the prostate, you are still taking bulk of the tissue. If you just keep cutting and you see a uh, spurting vessel, you just touch with the tip of the scissor, it just coagulates. And then probably the damage done is less rather That's than exactly, the bulky. Sir. The Everybody follows that book rule of the book before 100 cases are over. After 100 cases, we evolve ourselves and start stripping the bundle of the prostate. No, no, even if slip no that's absolutely true, sir. That's correct. Yeah. What you said is absolutely true. In fact, and what you seen, require is only one one clip, nothing more than that. And I have seen there are usually two arteries are sometimes third one. And these all three are small one. Sometimes you can see them before that and you just touch it and it's all no, done. True, 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 sir. Absolutely. The bundles are actually, you, the prosthetic particle require only one clip. 
rest all is our, our way of looking at the pedicle in a big way and putting multiple clips across. Actually speaking, one, maximum two clips are the only things necessary for any prosthetic pedicle. Okay. And uh, even if there is some oozing going on, we, we you can just stay there. basically because of the veins. That's but once the prostate is out, all these things stops. Absolutely true. It's only while you are giving traction they keep on oozing. No, if you, if you look at into your videos of uh, 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 robotic radical prostatectomy, 15 years ago, you have to you used to have clips from one corner to the apex of the prostate continuously. You do today, you require two clips at the bladder neck area and no clip later right up to the apex. So that's an evolution of the surgical technique what has evolved in the last 15 years. And another thing like when you are doing the nerve preservation, even if some venous oozing is going on rather than coagulating and tying it, you just put some surgical snow and just leave it there and everything stops and uh, by the time you finish the procedure. We don't react till the prostate is out, you will be much safer. Yeah, you got a good grasper, Eric, now. You see now it's better? <laughs> yeah, very nice. Right, Dr. Always, right, Dr. Eric will keep watching you. Sir, we're just going to Delhi to Dr. Ravel. Dr. Ravel, you're on? Yeah, I'm just hearing that discussion. I'm wondering that I'm uh, connected with you guys or not because you are either with Eric or We are watching you, the same thing being done. <laughs> Same yeah. thing. Same I think thing you have also reached the apex. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> Mallika Arjun, yes, you sir. can learn here in India more than these Reni and Eric. And what? Hindi mein ho jaye. Hindi mein ho jaye. Hindi mein ho jaye. Ah, ehi, ah. Hindi mein ho jaye. Dr. Sudhir, ehi baat hum discuss kar rahe the abhi. Ki jarurat hai ki nahi jarurat. Wahan Eric aur uske piche pade hue aap log aur yaar yahan bhi dekh lo. नहीं आप हॉस्पिटलिटी है ना हॉस्पिटलिटी नहीं नहीं ये तो आप तो बहुत बार Generally, one or two clips we apply it, but in my team, the young guys, they put a lot of clips. Mainly hemlock, I keep telling them, but I hope they will learn with the time. What I do with the neurovascular uh, uh, DVC, I first cut and as uh, Mallika was asking in the morning, the question, I always first cut and then, you know, like it. Uh, but I cut onto the base of the prostate, as you can see, I'm here, so that the length of the, whatever the Venus, you know, my length is there, probably I can encounter some venous wall and uh, the bleeding will be less. Many times it does help, but sometimes you, I have to increase the pressure. You can go ahead and learn with these. Oh, in logo se baat kar lo, aap varna bura maan jayenge. Are nahi, Sudhi, Sudhir. Sir. Sudhir, my doctor Ajay Kumar bol raha. Mein samal gaya, sir, aap ke awad. Are, yaar angri ji, mein log ke saamne nahi na bati a sakte hai. तुम्हारे बारे में हम लोग बात कर रहे थे ऐसी बात नहीं है ठीक है बर करते रहो गोरों को भी अब 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 हम गोरों से आ गए हैं नहीं नहीं तुम्हारा देख के मजा आ रहा है वो भी मंत्रा से कर रहे हो यार दूसरा हम आज कर रहे हैं अपने इंडियन रोबोट से और हमें पूछ नहीं रहे हैं डॉक्टर मल्लिकार्जुन मल्लिकार्जुन को तो मैंने yeah, can we go back to Rene? So we're going back to English with Dr. Rene. Anand. Rene, we are back with you. Thank you. Do you take Broco stitch? No, I'm doing the Ronald Barbet. 
Ayer me estuvo. Ajá. Thirty down. Thirty up. Thirty up. Thirty down. Thirty up, sir. Oh, that is, sir. Hmm. No, no, this one. Ah, yes, sir. Thirty up. Kya hai? Dekhi, sir. Thirty up. Thirty hai. down. Hai, yaar. Dekho, sir, sir, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aran, can we go back to Eric, please? He's we have a doctor, Eric. Yeah. Yes. So we are Yes, yes, people are trellis. of the bite should be as much as the urethra. Periurethral tissues should not come into picture. We can see you stripping the pubo urethralis down, pubo prostaticus. Uh, yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. We are, we, we are seeing here now a 
transition between the laparoscopic management of the DVC and the robotic management of the DVC. Both have switched on to cutting it before tying it and then tying it, up, uh, suturing it after cutting yeah. it. I think almost so, similar, way, similar. similar way. But I feel Sudhir is more comfortable. <laughs> I, I, I tell you one of the small tricks in here, majority of the theatres now are the anesthetists use the Floatron pumps for preventing DVT during, during uh, any laparoscopic surgery. Without understanding, when you are cutting the DVC, before cutting the DVC, switch off the Floatron pumps. They pump more blood and more bleeding happens. This is one of the things which go unnoticed in majority of the theatres. Because it's not seen, it is covered completely, and the Floatron going on, pumping the lower limb bud into the thing and your DVC will be still pumping across. How many of us increase the intra-abdominal pressure to 20 while cutting DVC? Are you practicing that still? Do you believe that increasing up to 20 will ever cause any more less amount of bleeding? The sinus is big, you know, sometimes it can absorb the air. Yeah. So, we stop believing that increasing the pneumoperitoneum will cause hemostasis, right? Yes. We don't believe it any further, but once upon a time, that was a strong phenomenon or a strong suggestion thinking that you'd increase the pneumoperitoneum. I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't make any sense. The more you suck, the more it bleeds. Only one thing is, the more you suck, the more the bleed is. But yeah. So, pressure has to be high. No. It does, the interrupt, no, no. The more you suck, the vein starts more bleeding. So, best thing is to irrigate. Best thing is to irrigate uh, to cut before cutting. No, routine pressure is necessary. Extra increase in the pressure doesn't help you. That's exactly. So, do you expect that, uh, do you say that it is to 15 only? That's all, 12 to 15. Uh, uh, yeah, Anand, can we go to Dr. Sudhir Raval? Yes, sir, sure. We are back with Dr. Sudhir Raval. Sudhir, you are taking the... Still yeah, I have finished taking the DVC rather. Yeah, don't. So, I, as you said, as a, I think the only person was talking that most of us we will cut and then like it. Uh, I remember my old days when uh, I do open surgery. I tried so many ways to control DVC. Finally, landed up in what I most of the time show in the workshop when I do this open surgery. But with the laparoscopy and robot, this uh, DVC is not a problem at all. Only thing trick which I do uh, in, in actually uh, during the ridges sparing, yeah, this is not a problem at all. But in uh, anterior approach, I cut towards the base of the prostate so that I can use the valve. The valve actually stop the bleeding, less bleeding. And very rarely I increase the pressure. And... Uh, Generally, we don't, I don't allow the assistant to suck. If they have to suck, they have to suck into the blood only, not, uh, you know, keeping their suction and reducing the pneumo, which can cause more bleeding. You can see I can take reverse suture with this uh, robot. That's not a problem. So things are improving. Uh, with the Indian robot, it's not that you can just write it off. I always say if you have the Da Vinci, two Da Vinci or one Da Vinci in your theater, you must have one mantra because it makes your robotic program financially very viable. And you can reduce the cost, you can earn for the hospital, you can earn for your self to win. But in Delhi, people are doing laparoscopic, uh, sorry, uh, police is me using robot. Dr. Anand Kumar is there in his hospital is done, being done and uh, hernia is very very you know uh, consistent surgery with da vinci people are using police is technically mainly they do with the cmr 
I have used CMR also. I have been on uh, uh, this thing, uh, Hugo. So CMR actually not that good, but Hugo uh, movement movement are, movements are very good. Only thing that there's a lot of safety mechanism yeah. which Rahman says, and there's a lot can of. Can we go back to uh, Rene, please? He's doing an analysis. Dr. Rahman, we'll get back to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. We are back with Dr. Rene. Rene, yes. you have done the posterior uh, wall, but you have a very good periurethral tissue. I think that is very important in postoperative continence because uh, you can see that how much tissue he has preserved. And that is going to be uh, really helpful. So, any comment, Rene? We are watching and um, you have almost um, done the posterior wall. Yeah. A very good stump of urethra, yeah, very nice. Yeah. He's got a, and, it, and um, bladder neck is also quite thick. So even even in a post you are be patient. So that is that is so that is good. So he's taking a quite good chunk of muscle and the because this is very important. What the full thickness urethra and then what the muscles I think distance was a little more, so I think it's taken out. Oh, he has gone to the ulta card there. Yeah. Okay, can we go back to Eric, please? We have a Dr. Eric. That's what I do. Our customers face up always retain karta. Mm. Anterior this. Uh, anterior. So, Maria, you used to use the word. When you are like getting very busy, uh, then you don't take care of You don't take that. You push the ligament. Back, back, back. Huh? You don't take that. Anterior reconstruction. Anterior reconstruction.
हाँ डॉक्टर सुधीर डॉक्टर हाँ कैन वी गेट कनेक्टेड टू डॉक्टर रावल सुधीर रावल हाँ डॉक्टर रावल यू आर ऑन या डॉक्टर रावल यस यस व्हेन यू आर कटिंग द रीथ्रा नियर द द अगेन एपेक्स ऑफ द प्रोस्टेट आई कैन सी यू आर अप्लाइंग कॉटरी एंटीयर वॉल एंटीयर वॉल यस सो व्हाई टू डू सो व्हाई नॉट टू कीप ए प्लेन या no but i just had i just I wanted to have a good picture and probably but you know sphincter is way back there okay and that's posterior wall right. cut sharply right. and after cutting the posterior wall i'll remain close to the prostate i thought if you are going through the margin so maybe hmm. that is getting burnt and the tumor get burnt is it that was no. the idea no no it's not I, i never thought of this thing okay right because capsule hmm. is very clear you have made yeah, the yeah. capsule of the prostate looking so obvious Yeah. Uh, so I think that fear doesn't remain. Yeah. I yeah. just because anteriorly it is quite, you know, uh, obvious there is a, a vertical fiber where I'll cut. So generally I take them I with diaphragmy. Okay. And I've seen people doing so. That's why I'm doing. There is not not a particular any any okay. specific reason. Would you like to prevent again? Uh, like to take preserve the intraprostatic urethra also at the apex. I do some of that thing, but when we see the vertical fiber, actually, then at that time we are into the prostatic okay. part of the urethra, some part, only probably half a centimeter. And when I cut the posterior wall, then I make sure that I am staying close to the prostate, right? Because if I go away from the prostate, then I will end up in the rectum. Yeah, yeah. So actually, yes. the idea remains the preserve as much as much of the urethra pelvic urethra length yes. as possible. So, because yes, that sir. is the most important factor for incontinence. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, right. Now you can yes, see that right. posterior plate. Right. So, yes, yeah. Sir. So, I can see that you are very cautious here, and yes, yes near you are going near the prostate. Apex. Yeah. 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 So, this is in the open surgery also. When you are doing That's open right. surgery, right. once you have cut the anterior wall of the urethra, you stay close to the prostate rather than away from the prostate. That's right. Yeah. Very nicely demonstrated, Dr. Sudhir. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Sudhir. Now, actually, all of us we are very curious to know the outcome, and uh, yes, the, the uh, again viability of the SSI mantra in India and abroad. Um, now, you I just you say because we could see there was some technical hitch in between. How uh, frequently you do face face that problem? Well, that makes the surgeon scared. You don't want to see it idle. Which problem? The technical problem that the things were not bipolar, working, bipolar. bipolar okay. And then you are the engineering were by the side of you because uh -huh. in many places of India, engineer may not be available on site. Uh, actually, it's not very common now. It should. It yeah. used to be very problematic in the beginning, and okay. sometime I now. will crib like anything. So I'll have a fight yeah. with Doctor Sudhir. Yes. And I'll tell him that. Uh, This is not done. I will not operate with this yeah, robot. That's right. So he used to say that I agree with you. If somebody else would have been there, he would have told me that take off your robot, take out your, uh, uh, take out your robot from my center. No, I know uh, that he, he has been appreciating you that you give very good yeah. feedback, critical feedback to him, and then they make yeah. technical advancement and they, they, your involvement has been very good and very supportive yeah. to them. We also feel yeah. it is make in India and the. People, uh, the doctor Sudhir Srivastav, again is trying to do as much as possible. We should give kids. Yeah, that's comment. what I feel. That but same time, he needs encouragement from all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely, we should support this uh, at least machine which is made here, which has been actually uh, going to be a great thing for, especially 5G and 6G coming. Once they are there, and the telesurgery evolves, you can imagine that. In India, surgery, robotic surgery will be there in the small town. You can operate from Chandigarh or from Ahmedabad and go to a small. The robot can be at in town, and the expert surgeon can operate from anywhere. That's good. So these are the possibilities. But as of now, this uh, technology is also evolving. But at least things are doable. It's not that you can't do the surgery, uh, uh, which is of uh, there is a, on there was monopoly of. of da vinci which is now going on slowly you have many company but uh, there are only few company who are making you know real uh, differences one of them is da vinci so this the one of them is ssi okay dr sudhi uh, the audience will like to know from you because i am also curious to know about what do you expect yes it the time taken uh, time will be taken by the dr sudhir sivasavan group for making it up to the mark 
where the people can think, okay, let us go for this. It's so, so viable and so economical. How much time? Yeah. Because over the years I can see that you have been involved, again, mm -hmm. adding to the technical advancement in SSI mantra. So do you think that uh, within a year or so, they will make it again uh, uh, up to the mark that yes, people can go for this and can feel safe when buying the SSI mantra? People are already uh, buying. I only thing that, that uh, uh, improvement uh, yeah. which they have to do, they will keep on doing. Okay. But as of now, uh, there are 13 robots in the, uh, in the country, right. including uh, Raipur, Coimbatore, one in Dubai, Mumbai. Uh, only thing that uh, if you see that the, the thing, I understand your uh, question. Yes. That uh, making at least uh, like uh, people are operating on the Da Vinci, they may not be happy with this robot. Uh, though I am, I have you, I have two Da Vinci here, but we do every uh, day one surgery at least on this robot. Uh, it's, it's a continuous evolving, pro evolving thing. And uh, but I can see that within next few months, their things will be much much better uh, there will be you know more changes coming to us and uh, um, hey, then probably uh, this is always a surgical surgeon's skill also matters it's not that uh, everybody on da vinci will be as good as uh, two surgeon in the world are like in laparoscopy you saw what happened in laparoscopy only three surgeons were doing laparoscopy and people were trying to uh, uh, mimic those things but could not happen with a lot of people. So yeah, they came yeah, with no, everything looks good when it is in the hand of Dr. Suzy Rabal. So <laughs> that's why oh, we are just expecting yeah, system others, system should, yeah. others should also emulate it and they should also feel happy like you. Can we so, go to uh, Dr. Uh, Eric's uh, uh, Dr. Okay. Rabal, yeah. we'll so just get back to you because see, Dr. Rene. Uh, the question is yes. Is it that uh, is Dr. Is Dr. 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 Singh? Yes. Sorry. Anand, yeah. can, we, can we go to Dr. Eric? Uh, uh, sir, uh, no, sir. Dr. Rene wanted to tell you something. Dr. Rene, you're on. Yeah. What? No, I don't need to say that. Okay, right. No, no. Thank you. So we go back we, to Dr. We, Eric. We wanted to ask Dr. Eric yeah, the Dr. anterior Dr. Eric. urethral stitches that he has taken. What is the purpose of those anterior urethral stitches? Inviting the mucosa. That will not that not make it ischemic and loss of structure there? Hear a lot of applauds. So now we have to do the anastomosis. So we do it with the uh, if you have an emolock, uh, if you have a vlock, uh, have you vlock in 20, 20, 23, 23 centimeters? Uh, is it possible? So you see now what we do. You have a vlock? Yes, I have a vlock. What is the length of the vlock? Okay, meantime, can we go back to Rene, please? Dr. Rene? Yeah. Rene, you're on. So, is it a routine for you to use this anterior racket technique when you're doing a laparoscopy? Yeah. Anterior racket way of closing the bladder neck. Isn't it? It appears to be much easier when you do it in a laparoscopic way. The vision into the posterior bladder neck is very well seen. And the chance of injuring the ureters also will come down. And I feel that the big difference is using the UR6. I love this one for Yes, 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 for yes. I don't know if you yeah, yeah, we use it, the same thing. Yes. That's what I said. No, that's exactly because in laparoscopy this anterior racket will really help sir because the posterior suturing will be easy, the ureteric orifice is well under control and you can close it as an anterior racket at the end of the uh, 
after the after, after the whole thing is over. What is the size of needle? No, this is a CT1 neuro needle which you commit as a 20 monocryl. What you get it? It is comes as with a CT1 uh, needle. It's called euro needle. That's a five H circle, which is very good for uh, erythrovesical anastomosis. Two seven zero six, yes. Mm. Yes. Yes, sir. No, no. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't know. What what I was saying this five six needle, the most important thing is how to handle and you have to do supination and pronation of your wrist joint to get the good results and follow the curve of the needle while placing it and while withdrawing it. If you don't do it, you will tear it and if you do it, your suture will come perfectly well without uh, increasing the hole of the uh, needle hole. Yes sir. It's a very strong needle. It takes out the tissue also along with it yeah. <laughs> if you pull it. <laughs> Can we go back to uh, Dr. Raval please? Dr. Ravel? Yeah. So I am taking now what you call is Roka stitch. It's only advantage which I feel is bringing the bladder towards the urethra. A lot of uh, studies have shown mixed results about the return of continence. Yuvraj does beautiful Roka stitch. But only thing which we get is from uh, ridges sparing is this thing that return of content is very high. Now coming to back, coming back to the question where we left Dr. Singh and we were talking, uh, it's always the surgeon skill which compromises a lot of uh, robotic or laparoscopic, you know, drawbacks or whatever the things are there. Uh, when the in nine, 2001, I saw the video from Money Man and in Jaipur. Uh, I really felt that this is the technology which probably will be helpful for us in cancer center. We could not learn the laparoscopy. Uh, but I did, after that, I'm saying that I have seen, please do not quote me when you talk to your gynecologist wife. I've seen many surgeons who actually, even with the robot, they could not pick up the surgery the, well, uh, the way they, um, a lot of people could do that. Like robotic prostatectomy, most of the urologists could pick it up. But the radical hysterectomy in gynae world is, is not very, you know, uh, popular, especially for cervix. They, they avoid doing for cervix because it's become very uh, uh, um, difficult. So it's a lot of surg surgeons' skill does matter in these using these things. It's always there. Surgeons' skill will always be a factor. It's always there in the open surgery, in the laparoscopy, and in the robotic also. So that's what I was saying that you can have very good robot, but it may not be possible for few to do the good surgery. You can have a bit not very good robot, but then still you can manage the good outcome with the surgeon's skill. This is the biggest factor which I feel. Any comment, Dr. Desai? I think he has been a great surgeon. We have seen him. And the way the technology has evolved, can he do comment on this thing? Surgeon, man behind the machine. Yes. I think it is important. I think first is the basic principle of uh, surgery, whether you do it open or laparoscopic or robotic, that principle has to be done. But I find that sometimes using a new technology makes the life easier. And um, but in the end, once you're done, you can adapt to any form of uh, uh, equipment with the time and you can do a good job. Because uh, whatever you will be doing, would be doing um, uh, with, the, with the principle of surgery. Thank you, sir. And I think I, I have seen you in all phases. You have <laughs> shown that... Um, uh, whatever you give you, whatever equipment you use, in the end you you come out on the top for the patient. Thank you, sir. Sudhir, 
Yes, sir. This, uh, just on a lighter vein, huh. in this era of women empowerment, <laughs> your, your comment has been very dangerous. Oh, and I am going to pass it on to your wife and many other gynecologist wives of the urologist. <laughs> I, I have in my uh, hospital and I see it every day. That is why I have told you. So please do not take advantage of that thing. Otherwise, these guys, these ladies will, you know, make my life very difficult. <laughs> I, I was already, I already actually has asked that please do not tell your wife. <clears throat> Can we go back to uh, Eric, please? Yes, sir. We are going back to Dr. Eric. Okay, can we go back to Rene, please? Yeah. Rene? Okay. Anand? We have with Dr. Rene. Yes. Rene, excellent. Thank you. Very well done. And um, it is a very clean and beautiful. Right. Nice demonstration. How long you keep the catheter, Rene? I think they can do 15 days, I don't know, 12 days. Okay. 
Okay. Do you do any diet study before removal? What is the routine practice? Pericathetogram or no, nothing, you just remove it? Rene? Huh? Do you do any diet study before removal or you just remove it? No, no, catheter removal before, ah, yeah, yeah. okay. See you at the hotel. Bye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Rene. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, back to Dr. Eric. Yeah, back to, yeah. So, we are finishing the anatomy of this, uh, after all the surgery on the, on the left side, and the, what I like is to finish the color sign. Can we go back to Dr. Rawal once? Sure, sir. We are with Dr. Rawal. Can they hear me? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Rawal, we can hear you, please. Okay. I am just doing the anastomosis using the loop suture, which is the you know, the standard of uh, doing this anastomosis in our institute, yeah. while I do it just then it's different, then we don't use this suture. You had two hours for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, doing extremely well. How much of the time there? We are at uh, about 10 minutes past to us. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, actually, I take a bit more time in mantra, but if it is uh, uh, in assess, uh, intuitive, then my time is around 1 hour 40 minutes. This no, actually does happen. Still an excellent demonstration it, today. Every, everything was good. It does happen when I started doing uh, intuitive, then I was taking more time, then I was doing open surgery. I was just finishing in one hour, ten minutes with the open surgery. So that's the, just, with the time things, they bet, become better. So, can we <coughs> go back to Eric, please? Yeah, we have a doctor, Eric. As we watch the surgeries on the sideline, we will start with our lecture series. So we'll have first have a change of guard to chair this session. May I call upon Professor Anand Kumar sir, Professor An Anup Kumar sir, Professor Pranjal Modi sir. Thank you. 
Yes, yes. So an excellent anastomosis by Professor Mandron. Uh, I'd, like I'd like to ask if he's left-handed or right-handed. And I'd like to uh, point the direction of the audience to the fact that he's been doing a wonderful ambidextrous anastomosis. And how if you're going to do a difficult anastomosis, yeah. uh, anyone has to be able to cultivate use of both hands. Yeah, he's a left-handed surgeon, but yeah, rightly, what rightly you have pointed out is doing with the both hands. Because he's been suturing using his right hand as both hands equally effectively. And I think if you want to do something like this, every surgeon should be able to at least become partly ambidextrous. You know, long back when uh, Prof. Ralph Clayman has done it, his uh, uh, nephrectomy, and in his lecture, he has showed that you should start shaving from both the hands. So when you will make a cut, you will learn better and shave better. And you should be, uh, you should be able to learn, use your both hands so that you can do good laparoscopic surgery. I also call upon uh, S.K. Raghunath sir to chair this session and Dr. Deepak Rajaguru sir to chair this session. We'll start the lecture. Sorry, sir, please go ahead. No, I just wanted to compliment Shrenik. All three surgery of a three different yes. technique has been shown and uh, very successfully. And uh, you can see that everyone has done a beautiful job. And um, I'm sure the outcome would be very good. We would definitely would like to know how they do post operatively. Sure, sir. We will definitely give you all the thank most of follow-up. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. For the first lecture, uh, may I call upon Professor Ajay Kumar uh, sir? Sir, I think if we are going to go for the lecture session, we will thank Dr. Ravel because sure, sure, sure. Yeah. we will be cutting off from Delhi then. Dr. Ravel? Yeah, thank you. You have finished the po posterior layer now, right? Yes, yes sir. I am done going with on the anterior layer. Thank you, sir. sir it's beauti beautifully done, you know. Thank you, sir. And we can um, appreciate. And all the three surgery has uh, been uh, um, excellent, and we saw the different different way one approaches it, and uh, okay, done sir. very nicely. Thank uh, you so much, Rahul sir. You. If you have any closing remarks, we can take that. Uh, I think a lot of things I uh, have already talked when they were not even allowing me, so I I full <laughs> jump bumped into the you know between between session. But the only thing I will say that. Any technology uh, has to be picked up uh, by our youngsters and everyone, uh, especially the things, uh, uh, and any monopoly in the in any field is not good for any field, like for medical it is definitely. You know, we patented drugs, we always feel the problem when they come in the market and the patient can't afford and the company is pushing this survival, that survival. So, you do have something which is there in the robotic field now. And uh, I think it has to be supported and encouraged by us as a medical fraternity. Thank you for that. Thank uh, you, sir. So, no, Sudhir, uh, the last remark I would like to give that there yes. should be no aspersions on the chairpersons uh, for your session. That we did not allow you or listening and this. this is the problem. Why do you suffer from this inferiority complex? You are, you are <laughs> such a wonderful... You are such a wonderful <laughs> surgeon. We always appreciate you. Are ye log to hamare atithi hai. Thoda bolna padta hai. Tumko to ro rahe hain. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can we go to Eric sir for his closing remark and then start our session? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Ravel. Uh, and Dr. Uh, we thank the SSI team there are for the transmission. Queries from the audience, Dr. Sudhir Ravel. Thank you. A big yeah, round Dr. of applause. Dr. Sudhir Ravel, there are some queries from you yeah. from the audience side. Okay, what are uh, they want to know how do you yeah. feel for other robotic procedure, urological procedure when you are using uh, this uh, mantra SSI? For, uh, for uh, prostate, I, I, partial nephrectomy, recalcitrant urology. Cystectomy is not a problem. Cystectomy is easier than radical prostate. No. Everybody knows uh, that. Partial nephrectomy. Partial nephrectomy. For complicated partial nephrectomy, I will still do it on Da Vinci. But for a straightforward partial let me all are we are doing on this robot. Yeah. Now coming back to urology. Robotic veil, we have done it and it's, it's easily 
can be done with the robotic well with this robot. Intra, so partial, yeah, intra-abdominal intra constructive urology. Right now we have not done it, sir. So hopefully in the future we will be doing it. We are developing the reflexes for this robot, so hopefully in future definitely we will be able to do that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Siddhi. Thank you very much for sharing your thank experience you. and then highlighting the machine, again SSI mantra. So the, we you. are also curious, yes, we can have uh, economical, again, point of view when you are managing the patient. Yes, so certain is going to be future. I also feel the same. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. For thank you, Dr. Vavil. Thank you all. Closing thank remarks you. from so, Dr. Eric. So, uh, Dr. Abhishek, the thing Thank is, you we will much, keep uh, the 3D on, sir. Yes, sir. The 3D will be on with Dr. Eric. Yes, sir. You can have the lecture on all the other four screens. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Eric. It was wonderful watching you. You can hear the round of applause. Going on to the lectures, uh, may I call upon Professor Ajay Kumar, sir, for his deliberation on and his perspective on minimal access surgery. Good morning friends, after such amazing session of robotic and laparoscopic radical prostatectomy, my talk on perspective of minimal invasive surgery 2023, lot of things I will have to skip because we have already discussed. As a matter of fact, I was given to understand that my lecture would be for 15 minutes, but in the last minute, it was cut to 10 minutes. Out of his two minutes of discussion, what discussion on, on yeah, I don't think there will be. So I will speak for 10 minutes, may pass up to 15 minutes. If the chairpersons who want to stop me, still I will not stop. <laughs> Friends, let me show you this particular uh, photograph, how the battlefields have changed over the period of time. It started with these horses and these cannons and this type of uh, army. And then we came down to the stage of bombing and all ESW, whatnot, and these tanks and the soldiers who have changed, uh, you know, and now, in the modern era, we have got these drones, these modern equipments, and modern soldiers. The urology has also developed in the same way. Starting with filament lab telescope, we came to the age of Hopkins rod telescope. And now, we are in the era of endo-urology led by Professor Desai, who is already sitting here. Laparoscopic surgery by uh, Indy Gill and robotic surgery by Mani Menon. All three Indians. So I don't think my friend Sudhir should feel a little inferior in any way. What are the modalities of uh, mass? Endoscopic, laparoscopic and robotic. Endoscopic surgery has got paradigm shift. In renal ureter stone surgery, I have shown you this photograph, you know, this uh, sketch, uh, where, you know, URS, Flexi URS, uh, uh, coming PCNL, and now biodirectional 
ECIRS. Let us take PCNL. Well, you know PCNL to mini PCNL to micro mini PCNL. I have got subnees there doing surgery, supine PCNL, Professor Desai, mini PCNL to micro PCNL. But I find uh, Janak to be the real pioneer in micro PC, uh, micro mini PCNL. Possible indications of combined approaches to kidney and ureter. If we can combine all these processes together, staghorn calculi, large renal concomitant ureteral stone or stricture, ipsilateral medium to large renal stone and contralateral small renal stone, diverticular stones with difficult angle to the infundibulum or narrow infundibulum, difficult angle to approach from the calyx to the percutaneous puncture, other calyces to avoid multiple tracts, impacted ureteropelvic junction stone with complete obstruction, ureteral structure that need anti-grade incisional. Uh, just a word about ESWL. We seem to be forgetting gradually, but may be used as salvage or complementary procedure in endourological stone management. The use of better analgesic protocol, slower shock wave delivery rate, careful application of coupling gel and close, closer monitoring of treatment with imaging will all contribute to improvement in treatment outcome. Let's take laparoscopic surgery. I, I need not say anything. I mean, you have seen, I mean, lab pilo, right from lab pyeloplasty to lab VVF repair, repair, Ramalingam should be somewhere here. He has been demonstrating it all over the country. Retroperitoneal laparoscopic renal surgery, orthopedic, you know, neobladder, and you have seen robotic. Less. About less, less said the better. Laparoendoscopic, uh, the procedure, you know, it's very interesting. So many names are there. My grandson when he was very little and his teacher used to come to teach him we used to call him with different names uh, some mother daddy something me something mother something and all so one day his teacher asked balu how many names have you got kaha sir mere jitne naam hai sun ke aap dang rah jaiyega so this is what less is so many names and then it has come to all sorts of surgery by doing less surgery. Robotic surgery. The, we have heard what is robotic, we have seen. Robotic surgery, I will not say much about it except those footnotes I have written. In comparison between laparoscopic and robotic partial nephrectomy, the robotic approach is associated with significantly rapid suturing time, thereby reducing the warm ischemia time by an average of seven minutes. But if you come down further, robotic surgery has not been proved to be better than laparoscopic surgery in many procedures such as radical nephrectomy, indicating that more improvements still need to be made, particularly in healthcare system with limited resources. Indian Robotic Mantra, I need not say much. Uh, when I made this slide, he has done, he had done 100. It has, he has passed 100 plus, today one added. And SSI Mantra Surgical Robot is the brainchild of a cardiac surgeon. He is also Sudhir, but Sudhir Srivastava and was developed in an Atal incubation center. And our Sudhir has been there or together with him to develop it further. Surgery for BPH. TRP and inoculation of prosthetic adenoma, we know bipolar, laser holmium, thulium, and all these procedures which I have noted, but two of them really fascinate me. One is prosthetic artery embolization, which many people are doing now in 2023, and the other one which has come recently is Eurolift. 
I think some, there may be a, uh, a stall outside, you will know much about it. Minimum invasive treatment in PUJ, 1949 open pyloplasty, 1985 endopylostomy, 1993 laparoscopic approach, and 2002 we started with percutaneous endopyloplasty and robotic surgery. Endoscopic approach to management of PUJ obstruction in pediatric cases has a higher failure rate compared to open or laparoscopic or robotic approaches. Now let's come to the energy sources we are using. In endo-urology we use lasers. In energy sources we use holmium, thulium and now we have Moses technique. The Moses mode laser is superior to the regular mode laser in procedure time there is no noticeable difference between the two treatment modes in terms of stone removal rates or the incidence of complication. Additional clinical investigations may indicate that the Moses system can increase stone free rate. Laparoscopic, you know how many monopolar harmonics and EBVS we are using. Well, Chandrayaan 3 landed on the moon. People thought land kar gaya, iska bachya ek nikal gaya, ghoom raha hai. But behind all this, what has taken place? Control command center, technical training program, astronaut training, virtual landing training, and also ISRO has been using artificial intelligence for a whole lot of other aspects of uh, Landing. Success of minimal access surgery also depends on artificial intelligence, imaging techniques, teaching and training, innovations, workshops and webinars, and the role of National Board of Examination in Medical Sciences in training and teaching. Advancement in imaging, we know from where we have come to this age. I need not explain because of the shortage of time. We all know about it. Now is the era of artificial intelligence, digital era imaging, and 3D ultrasounds. Radiomics in urology, again, shortage of time. I'm not going to tell, but all of you know, in the field of medicine, radiom radiomics is a method that extracts a large number of features from medical images using data characterization algorithm. These features, term radiomics feature, have the potential to uncover tumoral patterns and characteristics that fail to be appreciated by the naked eye. Ultrasound. There is such an improvement. Contrast enhanced ultrasound. We have power Doppler, histo scanning, 3D reconstruction and elastography. The improvement improved imaging characteristics of MRI and ultrasound combined with lack of ionizing radiation will prove major advantage in the decades ahead. Narrow band imaging. Management of bladder cancer, narrow band imaging has come like, uh, uh, you know, as whatever you say, it is an evolution. Molecular imaging. Molecular imaging refers to the use of molecular probes in combination with an optical or fluorescent technique to functionally image malignant tumors. In combination with MRI, CT, positron emission tomography and single photon emission CT, they have the potential to improve the staging. MRI, I would not say much about it, we, you all know, we have got diffusion wave MRIs, MR urography. The present sensitivity and specificity is not ideal with hemorrhage, infection, fibrosis, and atrophy. We need more improvement. We have three Tesla MRIs, seven Tesla MRIs. We have got gamma, PSMA, 11 PET, CT, MRI guarded biopsy, and MRI US uh, ultrasound fusion biopsy also holds potential. In the era of virtual imaging and augmented reality technology, 
the models obtained from the patient's MR and CT images are superimposed on the real image of the patient on the monitor tablet or goggle screening. Right side, you see how it is done. Differentiation of immersive experience medical simulation tools. A fully immersible virtual environment, real world experience boosted by virtual features, experiencing the interacting with the real and the virtual world together. Augmented reality for surgical navigation, intraoperative navigation in robot assisted urological surgery, development of AR navigation by urology department, augmented reality with predictive surgical repair. Training in minimal access surgery. Simulation training. Break reconstruct a procedure. A smaller task simulators, micro simulators, and integrate micro trainer together. We have got JPEG training center next door from here in MPH, and many have the exposure and the experience of having that different type of training in wet lab and the dry lab, and there are more improvements in the training. We have got Europad program where we start with the lectures, then we go to simulators, and then we go to live surgeries. My hats off to this young urologist, Dr. Ashish Ravande Patil. And I say, I quote here, late Professor APJ Abdul Kalam, everybody should have a dream. Dream has to be converted into thought and thought into action. That is what he has done. So many patents, so many he has done, and kudos to him. I asked uh, Suresh Patankar, who is also involved, to send some slides. He was not able to send, but I, I, I mention his name. Now the national workshops and webinars, they are important part of teaching and training. You have seen this morning. So UCCONS and midterm workshops, zonal UCCONS and midterm workshops. We all, you know, are teaching and training us. What is the role of National Board of Examination in teaching and training? Fellowship courses in minimal access surgery, webinars, we are having regular webinars, and almost 80% students are of National Board uh, yeah, are getting themselves. Last night, the president was here uh, of National Board, and he was telling 80% attendance there. Recognition of regional training centers, encouragement to organize, uh, organizers of workshop and webinars by granting recognition and giving financial assistance. And what is the future program of National Board? To develop central training center for MIS training on hub and spoke technique, develop regional training center. I have given you the photograph and the work is on it, very soon you will find that every National Board Examination Center will have its teaching and training, uh, you know, center. Well, artificial intelligence. You heard Professor Mahendra Bhandari in the last conference, the way he spoke about it, I need not say much, but in the future, shift in the clinical paradigm as AI applications will find their place in the guidelines and revolutionize decision-making process. It is used to predict outcome of surgical procedures. Future. What is the future now after 2023? Minimal invasive techniques like cryoablation, radio frequency ablation, HIFU. Further research in haptic feedback into robotic system will enable feel of the surgeon during the procedure, eliminating the disadvantage of sight only feedback. The operating room of the future, robotics combined with improved in navigation and surgical precision through a development of nanomedicine. Integration of various operating room functions will become a reality. Intraoperative combination with augmented reality navigation system. Friends, my salute to Sudhir was feeling little, 
you know, depressed, I am surprised, but he did not see this slide, I hope he is seeing, and if he is not seeing, I will send him. My salute to Indian neurologists who have taken minimal access surgery to global horizon as, a, as teachers, pioneers of procedures, and innovators. Indian neurology, neurologists are signing stars in the sky of urology. I need not name those people. There are many stars. Some of them are chairing, some of them have chaired, some of them are organizing, some have organized, and all. Large, vast number, hai, and I salute all of them. Well, I have certain suggestions for young urologists who are sitting in the audience. Before I close down, and uh, uh, now I have got only two uh, slides. Persons, please practice person. Whatever technology is advancement is there, the person who is, has to be treated is in the center of everything. Never forget the person. So there should be person-centric medicine. Uh, spend time in personal and family social background, you must know. You must have the empathy and emotional contact with the patient, which is lacking these days. Communication skills should be such that even if something goes wrong later, he says and says, thank you, doctor, you have done everything, but what could we do? Physical examination. These days I find, because we seniors get only the referral cases from all over the place, from young urologists, and I find that they do not do re digital rectal examination. A straight away what investigation, that investigation, and then start. 120 gram prostate, PSA is increased, they go on the line of malignancy. Prostatic abscess, PSA increase, go on. So there are so many. So please, there is old dictum, if urologist does not put finger in the rectum, he puts his foot in it. A lot of hassle and investigation is curtailed. When you manage the patient, don't use conveyor belt mechanism. Thoda sa samay lenge Anant Babu, it will take half minute, a corporate hospital mein, ek aadmi ke aankh mein phatinga ghus gaya. O aankh pakad ke pahuncha corporate ke reception bola, oh aankh! Bhez diya aankh bhi bhaag mein. Us doctor ne kuch dekha ho khane ka aankh, jaldi jaldi, usne MRI, OMRI hua maalum hua, baap rib baap. So to bhaari foreign body piche hai, usko to nikalna padega. तो कहा कि भाई ऐसा करना पड़ेगा बोला खर्चा कितना लगेगा तो बोला कुछ नहीं चार लाख रुपया वो हड़बड़ा के जो देखा उसका फतेंगा गिर गया सी अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आई मीन डू नॉट लुक फॉर पेशेंट्स टू यूज द टेक्नोलॉजी यूज द टेक्नोलॉजी ऑन सुटेबल पेशेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज अफोर्डेबिलिटी पिक्यूनियरी इंटरेस्ट शुड नॉट ओवरटेक एथिकल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट माय थॉट्स now medicine is science with high tech to be available to those who could afford to pay for it. About 75% of the country's population resides around 5,76,000 villages. Yet 75% of national health resources are spent on 25% of the urban population. There is misdistribution and duplication of healthcare institutions even within the urban areas. Friends, we cannot afford to keep on seeing our own reflection and ignore the vast sea of deprived humanity who deserve a dignified life and good health. It is our duty to take the advancement in neurological management in patients to, of deprived population in rural and urban areas. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar, sir. As always, wonderful to hear your presentation and a lot of thoughts you have given to the audience. So, any 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 questions from the audience? Dr. Desai, sir, you want to comment? Because what he was talking at the reality of the uh, today's era. I think his message is very clear. He has um, given full... Uh, history of the development and in the end he has given a, um, 
a practical hint while you are carried away with the technology but the still simple uh, principle of um, patient care should not be forgotten i think it's uh, uh, very nice thank you thank you bhai so i think the message is it's the man behind the machine not the machine which matters so thank you very much sir and now i will invite professor desai sir the legion to another legion following the first legion <laughs> to give the lecture on laparoscopy in stone disease badhiya sir perfect sir first of all good morning to all of you and uh, we had a lovely uh, session in the morning will be so three different um, uh, way of doing a radical prostatectomy uh, but the outcome was same and uh, i congratulate shrinik for organizing such a such a wonderful um, scientific program and of course inviting me here to talk um, something out of box for me but uh, still i will try my best the last laparoscopy in uh, stone surgery you know in the era of the endourology question is why do laparoscopy when result with endourology are excellent well if you see the changing scenario we were in 1970 when we were student we were doing open surgery and then the endourology was discovered and then endourology took the main stage and open surgery was pushed to the side and then the after the uh, open surgery the laparoscopy came so whatever you are doing open surgery was shifted to laparoscopy and then whatever you doing laparoscopy was shifted to the robotic surgery so that's how the things went but i perceived this advantage of laparoscopy in management of the stone potentially more invasive than endurology need separate set of instrument and a need expertise i think if you saw people doing a robotic surgery and people doing a laparoscopic surgery there was not much of a difference in the technique what we saw so you have to develop that uh, uh, expertise so contemporary indication for the laparoscopy i perceive is calculi with a upj obstruction especially with a crossing vessel retrocaval ureter who needs a pyeloplasty and uh, uh, reconstruction ectopic kidney with stone disease horseshoe kidney with unfavorable pelvic collecting system uh, stone in the non functioning kidney unit kidney with a lap partial nephrectomy genthogrinomatous spiral nephritis requiring nephrectomy morbid obesity leading to endurological procedure and dif difficulties so i will just give you some example as also i have been um, shortened from 15 minutes to 10 minutes uh, but i know i am a stone surgeon i can make up for the time so here is a stone ha huh? but very unfavorable pelvic collecting system you cannot approach to the collecting system and here the best way is to do a laparoscopy extra renal pelvis very easy to dissect out do a pilotomy and take out the stone and that would be the end of it still a minimal invasive surgery but complete job is done without damaging the collecting system or kidney function or if you have a stone like this in a kidney which is um, very very with large it will take lots of time but the collecting system and pelvis is large but collecting system is uh, uh, small here like uh, you can do a uh, three port and small small you dissect out the pelvis very easy is the extra renal pelvis and um, uh, uh, you dissect out and do the pilotomy and then the you open it up and then you deliver the stone intact that is a one of the advantages you remove the stone intact so there is no residual stone um, and then um, and then you take it out and then you um, uh, um, uh, uh, do the suturing and then you 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 close the thing and take it out so still is a minimal advisory surgery now you have a lap urethrolithotomy uh, for him Impacted urotic stone. This is a 80-year-old gentleman with right flank pain, comorbidity, asthma, hypertension, spinal surgery for a Herschel bar implant done for a collapse L2 vertebra six years back, and the right upper urotic stone, which is again large, 18 millimeter by 14 millimeter with a normal function. That's a stone uh, here with the IVU. You can see it dilated, and I suspect there's a kink 
uh, um, below. And here you can um, do the um, either translaparoscopic, I mean uh, abdominal, or you can do a, a retroperitoneal. And you dissect out the, the internal iliac, go retroperitoneum, there will be adhesions because of the spinal surgery and some spinal thing. And then here is the ureter. And you can see that there is a stone there you can make out, and then ureter is kink. And it is going to be, it was, that's why it is probably difficult to take it out. And here you dissect out the stone and then make a small incision and uh, um, again advantage is you take out the stone completely um, um, deliver it out and then close the uh, the the, uh, the incision which you have done opening so it is a it is a duplication of open surgery which we were doing earlier for the for the for the for the thing so here again you uh, take uh, sutures and then close the urototomy uh, uh, and then put a, put a urotic catheter or a stent. In this case, we put a stent now and then complete clearance of the stone was done. Now, way back in 2000, the Goel had published, uh, compared the laparoscopic urotolithotomy with the open urotolithotomy in, nine, uh, in 55 cases uh, in laparoscopic and 26 in open. Uh, Ajay, you know, we were still ahead that time. The time we did a comparative study laparoscopically for the stone. And here, of course, there are 10 cases we have to convert to open, but the laparoscopic retroperitoneal urotroscopy is viable alternative to a large upper and mid urotic calculi whom previous endological attempt has failed. That was a goal in 2001. At the same time, in 2002, Didi Gore, the pioneer of retroperitoneoscopy, and he did 101 cases. And then Goel again did a 55 cases, Hamel um, did a 40 cases in Delhi, and there is a fat. And if you see, and the success rate is from 93 to 95 percent, um, uh, varying up about it. But in my book, the, the most important indication is renal calculi with PUG obstruction. This is a pulvary junction obstruction where you, you have to do a pyloplasty. And then pyloplasty, laparoscopy is, of course, the main. So it becomes a just a little addition to what you are going to do. And here you dissect out the pelvis, you um, um, put a, a, a scope and then see the stone because here are multiple stone and you can stone in upper calyx can be easily picked up and taken out, you know. Or you can pass a, a urotroscope um, uh, into the um, uh, collecting system to see the uh, the place of the stone here is a urotoscope and then you picked up the stone there are multiple stones so you have to remove all of them and then either you can do a flexible urotoscopy and then check all the calyces wherever there are stone and then you can go and, and pick it up or you can use a dormia to pick up the stone here are multiple stone so we took out all the stones by using a different different uh, uh, instrument and uh, clear the stone completely before uh, started doing the uh, endo endopyloplasty. And here, uh, once it is removed, we have put a DJ stand and then uh, did an uh, endopyloplasty. And, uh, and this is the end result. Endopyloplasty. And all the stones are removed. And this is the X-ray. This is another patient with a lower Calicial stone with a PUG obstruction and 17 year old girl and um, again we had uh, opened up and then uh, here we did a flexible urotroscope. We passed into the uh, collecting system and then we could see uh, the stone and um, then the stones were small and uh, with, the, uh, with the thing we picked up with the dormia basket and uh, so um, the stone management can be done with laparoscopy uh, and combined with uh, whatever may be the pathology and the primary pathology you can do it laparoscopically at the same time you can remove the stone and clear the thing. So this is um, uh, another um, case and then um, the, the post-operative uneventful and early con convalescence. This is a 42 year old man with a retro ureter and you can see that picture and then we did a laparoscopy and here is the ureter and we just divided the ureter and then um, 
he did a, uh, opened up the ureter and luckily that stone also dropped into the pelvis and we passed a forcep and we could pick it up nicely and we could um, take it out and then um, we um, uh, repositioned the ureter and closed that um, uh, ureter ureterostomy. So here the post-operative result. So now it's sometime you have a horseshoe kidney where we do most of the time endurology, but sometime something are difficult and Waldvi has published a paper in 1994 where he used a laparoscopy to clear it. Here is a stone, a large stone in the isthmus and with a, with a few multiple stones uh, in, the, in the kidney. This is a CT scan and you can see that. And here is a uh, dissection in the retroperitoneum. Uh, you go over the lower pole of the kidney and to the uh, isthmus and the pelvis and the and, and uh, dissect out the pelvis which is lying over that. You open the pelvis and the retroperitoneal. Now remember this is a big stone. It would have taken a very long time to take it out. In here you can take out completely. You know, The first um, large stone was removed and then the, uh, you have a, a, a second stone which is slowly delivered out and then um, there was a few small, small stone which was taken out and then you can um, um, uh, do the suturing and close the, uh, the, 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 the pilotomy. So this is the one and here is the end result. Now this is a, another with a laparoscopic nephroid lithotomy. This is a stegon calculus, iratory. Uh, mind you, that time we were doing open surgery, ionotrophic nephrolithotomy. So here we have dissected the kidney completely and put a Satansky clamp on the hilum. And then um, we used, um, um, luckily I have the, the ultrasound probe to, uh, to look, visualize the kidney intraoperative and then look at the, uh, the shortest possible way I can make an incision and take out the, uh, the stone. So we, we, we did that. What happened? Something went wrong. What happened? Okay. So um, you can do a little fast forward. Okay. And um, and then we did a we did a. Um, uh, nephrotomy and then removed the stone and um, um, this is a frozen but um, the stone was taken out I think I will skip that uh, thing and then all the stones were uh, removed and taken out and this is the this is um, uh, another obese main with a left bank with a stegon calculus and here we uh, again we did a um, uh, um, Pilolith, um, pilo, not pilo, nephrolithotomy and because it was a stegon calculus thinned out cortex and then we opened up the, the cortex that time and that, that time the open surgery we were doing quite a bit for the uh, inotrophic nephrolithotomy and um, so it, we completely um, uh, delivered this stone and took it out and um, uh, if you can see and then we sutured it and like um, normally we do in partial nephrectomy. So I will just go a little ahead. And this is a stegon calculus. We, we did laparoscopically and taken out. And now this is the IVP postoperatively. So we are not done too much damage. And this is the postoperative. Now here is uh, another patient whom we are done with um, money menon, um, uh, did a laparoscopic and then put a port and we wanted to do uh, inotrophic nephrolithotomy and a stegon calculus. So this was the port position and uh, it was a stegon calculus. We can see that we did a 3D reconstruction of the, sto um, the, the, the stone and we could find out, we dissected out our artery vein, we put um, clamps and we put um, uh, ice and uh, cool the kidney, exactly duplicating the open surgery. And then uh, uh, once we have done that, you can see the kidney is white. And then we uh, find out the way to um, uh, where to incise through the uh, endovision, uh, through the uh, uh, ultrasound. And then each stone was removed from the uh, each dilated calyx. And then we use um, um, ultrasound to locate. And you can see that it is a really stegon calculus. But the whole stone was um, uh, taken out and then um, 
it can be done. So laparoscopically you can do it. Stegon calculus and you can do ionotrophic and here is the stone and this is a normal kidney and post-operative picture. And lastly, I just wanted to show you, this is a patient who has got um, a cross ectopia with a stone, but pelvis was uh, above, I could not do it percutaneously. So I can do it laparoscopically, but instead I did a robotically. But um, just principle is same. You could have done uh, laparoscopically, dissected out the kidney, because this was the difficulty in any, any way you do it from endologically was not possible and then either you do open or um, laparoscopically or robotically and this was a matrix calculi you can see that and completely taken out and then from the each part of the uh, calyx and then uh, washed out and then um, uh, we did um, closure and then the, it was closed and then the stitch completely and the DJ was kept and this is a stone taken out completely and lapro or a robotic surgically and this is a DJ stand. So in era of endoirology, still there is a place for the laparoscopic uh, management of the stone. Only thing is you need a um, uh, courage, you need a vision, you need a experience and the principle doesn't change. Whatever you do, open endo, lapro or a robotic surgery. Thank you very much. question uh, thank you very much dr thai sir it was wonderful presentation and uh, i i think the laparoscopy does has a role in selected patients in stone disease which you have shown so uh, excellent in a um, videos any questions from the audience uh, sir uh, they can ask or my one question sir from my side yeah. sir all these laparoscopic yeah. procedures you have done uh, like for uterine hotmes impacted stones what are incidence of strictures uh, like in the post op period no stricture, no, no. On the contrary, we have treated stricture which has happened in urotroscopy after um, urotroscopy um, and we have treated that by laparoscopy uh, doing an excision and end-to-end -end, uh, urotroscopy. I think laparoscopy in that can, uh, situation become a, a salvage procedure. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent uh, talk, sir, as usual. Uh, one more uh, addition is that especially in uh, pediatric cases, if you have a large stone and uh, uh, underlying uh, obstruction like uh, retrocaval ureter or PUJ, it's definitely uh, better uh, than even in the adult. I you don't want to go through the nephron and damage and uh, so... I think what is most important in that case is um, percentile distribution of the stone. If the stone bulk is more in the pelvis compared to the calyx, then you can do a large pilotomy, take out, and then you can go to the endoscope uh, in each um, calyx and pick it up the stone and take it out. But if you have a small uh, um, pelvis and a multiple calycial stone, it becomes more. I think probably in that uh, you may do multiple. Or best thing I would feel like in old time, I do the inotrophic nephrolithotomy and clear the stone. Sir, sir one question, sir. Sir, here, sir. Here. Yeah. Sir, when there is a um, cortex is very thinned out and plan to do a laparoscopic nephrolithotomy, uh, is there a necessary to take a vascular control or you take always? Uh, no, I think, you know, it depends upon, like say, I have um, a large calycial diverticulum. Hmm? Okay. Large calcium, a thinned out cortex. Yes. I mean, I would not touch that because this is all thinned out cortex and uh, I'll always just open it take out the stone and then um, I'll fulgurate the mucosa and close the thing. So, no so one control. of the indication is also laparoscopic uh, indication is a large diverticular stone um, uh, with a thinned out cortex. So hilar control will not be necessary? I, I don't think in that yes. case, uh, situation because I also do a Doppler and the C if I can uh, get away with it. Thank Very you. often uh, for a small renal calcula, a small renal tumor, I do a zero ischemia. Though you, if you think that, you know, situation is that uh, there might be, so you may dissect out the artery and vein. Even when necessary, you can clamp it. Otherwise, you should. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, next talk is by Dr. T.B. Raja, role of genetic testing in the prostate cancer.
good morning i thank shanik uh, for giving this opportunity and also i wonder why they gave this topic when we are talking about surgical technique although it is a theoretical topic so i hope that you know i'll do justice for uh, in this talk so as we know the you know as a an oncologist and treating prostate cancer so now the new thing is coming up that is genetic testing in prostate cancer although we know that the, the theory behind that nonetheless i will go into the detail because i think i could see many postgraduates here little basics more of basics so when we say genetic study so we have to have some definition to remember it is the genetic study of genes genetic variation and their roles in inheritance this is called a genetics so if somebody mentions genetic testing it applies only for the inherited mutation that is hereditary cancer the word genetic testing includes only for the inherited one the word genomics says that it is the study of all persons genes interactions the entire gene uh, uh, the the knowing the entire genome is called as genomic study so there is a major difference there and when we say hereditary versus genetic this what is the difference all hereditary cancers are genetic based genetic diseases but all genetic diseases are not hereditary so this is the definition we knew already but you have to recollect it the reason is that the genetic changes can happen even in acquired state it may not be a hereditary one so with these definitions i think uh, the slide is not moving yeah so it is and the definitions there the, the four definition which i told you so the it so now when the mutation happens so that's what we are going to look into the mutations of these genes which causes cancer so we have the terminology called a germline mutations what does it mean the mutation that is inherited that is from the parent to the the sibling, the, the next generation why are either sperm or egg this is called a germline mutation to calculate that to identify this gene we can take any tissue from our body except the diseased part diseased part sometimes may not show germline mutation for example in prostate cancer if you do a biopsy and ask for germline they won't do it so it should be the any tissue normal tissue from the body starting from buccal mucosa to the blood test any nucleated cells will give you this uh, uh, this abnormality the next is somatic mutation that usually happens after for that is an acquired one so again this is easily identified by genomic sequencing and generally this is attributed to the tissue which is diseased that is prostate cancer tissue that is somatic testing germline testing is the one which we do it for the uh, for the germline mutation in the this thing but cancer can occur with both germline mutation also somatic mutation also sometimes one sometimes both together remember that that means to for a, for a, for a testing for a prostate cancer you have to do both germline and somatic this is the current trend not only somatic so the whole genomic sequence is very easy now say 10 years back or you know we never talked about this topic at all so now thanks to the software and the, the technical advances it's very easy to do identify this whole gen genomic sequence earlier used to be only a one place in the country now every lab does it and quite cheap and when we look into the all the genes we don't see all the genes we know there are few genes around say 100 to 500 genes are uh, you know mutated in cancers out of which in prostate cancer generally we look at 15 to 20 genes only you need not do all the genomic sequence in 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 prostate cancer so generally when there is a genetic alteration so there are four things happens uh, causing mutations proto oncogenes tumor suppressor genes dna repair genes are a program cell death these are the four things mutation happens but in prostate cancer remember we are looking at dna repair genes mutation so it is very easy to remember so we know that the metastatic prostate cancer is heterogeneous always we tell this term whenever we start a talk but see here the changes can happen in very different way so one is the wnt pathway alteration p3k pathway alteration or a androgen receptor pathway alteration or a cell cycle alteration or a dna repair alteration so dna repair alteration is only one part of prostate cancer it is not like everybody will have a dna, DNA repair mutations so around 23% will have a dna repair mutations altered or altered uh, altered dna repair pathways so that means we are identifying one sub section of the prostate cancer with these genes this is for uh, this is for the prostate cancer uh, pathogenesis 
So when you say the mutation, what is the commonest mutation? So uh, you can see single base, with, um, there is a single base lesion breaks or a double base, uh, double stand breaks, single stand and double stand, the both are important for prostate cancer. Single stand, uh, uh, single uh, stand break is usually identified by PARP, it is repaired by PARP gene, PARP protein, whereas D uh, D DSB repair is uh, repaired by HRR panel. So these are the two important things we have to remember. Both can happen in DNA mutation. So once you see this is a simple uh, the picture where when there is a single, uh, yeah, I think I can show that. single stand break when it happens the PAR protein comes and helps in repair and the cell survives. Every, every one of us will have this sing, single uh, base repair, I mean single stand uh, uh, breaks but it generally normally it gets corrected. Whereas in if it happens in a cell where there is a PARP inhibited, when we inhibit the PARP protein, cell either will die or survive depending upon the BRCA protein present in the cell. Remember that. So that means you inhibit the PARP, if the, pa if the patient has got a BRCA deficient cell, then the cell death. That is what we are interested in cancer. We have to kill the cell. So for, that is by inhibiting the PARP, in a patient who has got a BRCA mutation. That is the only uh, clinical utility we have right now. PARP protein is inhibited and finally the cell is going to die because there is a BRCA mutation. So as I told you, when we see PARP inhibitor, so we look into the mutations here. So usually there are major mutations like BRCA1, BRCA2 and ATM mutation and all others are all minor mutations, but still this is very important, even the minor mutations give good clinical results. Why test for genomic alterations as I told you earlier? The first one, why we are testing this genetic test at all? So family, to identify the familiar risk, so we know that prostate cancer is now hereditary and familial to quite a, quite a good number of patients. The next is to know the outcomes, if the patient has got any problem with the DNA mutation, the outcome is not so good, it is an aggressive disease, so we have to really go into the detail, even hereditary cancer we know that it is an aggressive disease. Predictive biomarker for PARP inhibitors because we have to identify many inhibitors now here. So there is the only one inhibitor in clinical use as of now. So one in nine have a prostate cancer out of which one in five have a family history. So five to ten percent of tumors are hereditary, fifty percent of chance passed on to the next offspring if it is a germline mutation. So only germline mutation causes hereditary cancer. For example, if you do a testing somatic genetic testing in the prostate cancer tissues, BRCA1, BRCA2 positive, they don't inherit the cancer. We have to recheck in germline to say whether it is inherited. So hereditary prostate cancer, do we do germ the genetic testing for all? <coughs> Not actually. So the definition, this is the NCCN guideline, one close blood relative with a breast or ovarian cancer, you can advise them a genetic testing with a prostate cancer or two family members with breast, ovarian, prostate cancers those with metastatic prostate cancer, any patient who comes with metastatic prostate cancer, it is our duty to get a genetic testing done, gene testing done, either in the tissue and germline, preferably both of them. So, tumor can develop either by germline or somatic as I al already told you. Even if you have a germline mutation, the patient can get prostate cancer. You can have a somatic mutation, still they can have a prostate cancer. So then what are the tissues which we generally use. Generally we use tissue testing for genetic uh, or we can use a whole blood testing or right now we are also can use a circulating DNA testing. There are three methods available. So most of the times it is tissue testing and to certain extent blood and uh, circulating DNA. As I, I told you earlier, the blood testing will help you in two things. One, you can get a germline as well as circulating cells. If you get a circulating DNA, you can also get a somatic test. So both is possible in the blood, but in the tissue, in the cancer tissue is only somatic testing. So that's what the advantage of doing a, uh, uh, in, the, in the blood. So when you see a primary and metastatic tumor samples, so usually primary tumors are better. Even metastatic, if you cannot get a primary tissue uh, sampling, you can get, a, get it from even the metastatic tissue. So when we do HRR testing, the, this is the report what we get, pathogenic, uncertain, not pathogenic. In, like in any, uh, any advanced test, these are the three categories and if it is not pathogenic, generally it is not the cause of any, uh, any uh, prostate cancer. So based on this, the profound tri trial uh, 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 checked Olaparib, that is the new molecule in HRR mutated genes 
So they had a two arm, um, cohort A, cohort B. Cohort A is for BRCA1, BRCA2, the major mutations, and cohort B is for a minor mutations. The, the, I can go to the, this are the panel. You can see major cohort A and minor cohort B. But they could find out that, you know, there is a significant overall survival difference when compared to HR, when you use PARP inhibitor in a patient with HR, HRR major, major mutations. But on a long term analysis, they found that even a minor mutations are important. As of now, we are giving Olaparib, that is a PARP inhibitor in patients with BRCA mutations or any ATM mutations or any minor mutations in the this thing. So this is what, this is the reason when you diagnose prostate cancer by biopsy, get the test done. The test is hardly 17,000 rupees and because we have to do early because the tissue which we s store it, it's usually after two years it is not suitable for or you have to repeat the biopsy to get a HRR test done. So currently the NC NCCN guidelines says that any T but lymph node meds or any M1 meds, so genetic testing and a molecular based analysis is, is almost now mandatory now. Thank you so much for your patience here. Yuvraj, tell me, we get a lot of patients whose father we have operated and when the son really asks us, Dr. Sub, how about I also have a son and so what would you normally recommend it? If you are getting the genetic testing, they say about 29, 30 genes testing they do for this prostate cancer I am asking and I think it costs about 28 to 30,000 rupees. What do you suggest? Really? Yeah, what so generally for a patient with a high grade cancer or a high risk cancer, so we advise genetic. Suppose if it is a 3 plus 3 cancer, we don't advise genetic testing. And before testing in our institute, there is a genetic counsellor. They will counsel the patient and the entire family. So this is always I tell, this is like, you know, by knowing a genetic risk for the disease, it is knowing just, a, it is like astrology. We are not going to do anything except to be in a constant More surveillance yeah, monitoring these patients. Yes. So, but still patients, the, the next question they ask you, so if it is positive, are you going to treat me? Or are you going to prevent the cancer? So, but that is not possible, but still it is commonly done in breast cancer, the risk is almost the same, a little bit higher, but we have to know because they will be in a constant surveillance. Okay. So, in every case you recommend this or? Yeah, in every case after radical prostatectomy, if it is a high grade cancer, high risk like you know PT3A, B, or N1 disease or M1 disease, all patients are advised, almost 50% of them get the disease. Uh, but, but how many people then, I think according to your uh, presentation, I think about 27% of the patients, they Usually our uh, germline mutation is quite less in our country, it's around say 15 to 20% and uh, somatic mutation is still less, 5%. So if the test is negative, is, does it mean that it is not going to develop the... No, he is not at high risk for prostate cancer. But still, the normal surveillance, I mean screening, what we do for uh, after 55 years of age, that is should be done. That is nothing to do with this. But if they are positive, they should be doing from the age of 40. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have yeah. explained yeah. it. And uh, if thank there you. is no other yeah, question, I think you. we can move yeah. the next. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yuvraj. Thank you. Just one, one last question. Uh, because now we have one drug in our armamentarium, Olaparib, which can use in these patients with uh, BRCA1, BRCA2 mutations. Uh, but we have been doing for all the patients, but only thing is we find normally the positivity rate is very low in our experience. Less than 5%. Yeah, so that is the one problem. So in your experience, what is the positivity yes, rate? Yes, same, less than 5%. But now, again, there is confusion. Olaparib is very expensive from AstraZeneca. So now we, there is its brother, Rucaparib, the commonly used in ovarian cancer. So if they cannot afford this, I am using that and also we don't have any data. And now there are two trials going on, irrespective of genetic alterations, role of Olaparib, irrespective of genetic alterations. So they are finding it, so usually that is a second line, third line or a fourth line, remember that, it is not first line. It is a oral tablet easy to give, only side effect which we have used it is the fatigue. So apart from that we don't get major side effects with Olaparib. So these are all coming up now. So there are so many molecules are being tested, it is Olaparib is the first one to get a genetic based treatment for prostate cancer. I think there is one last question. Yeah. Uh, you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, tell me where you are. You just mentioned that uh, uh, after 55, some you do screening of some patients. Is it mandatory now that no. you. Uh, no, 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 no. The screening is a different issue altogether. It is a big topic. As of now, screening, what we do is that we, this is called as opportunistic screening. So we give awareness if they are wanted to get it done, it's, there is a selective right. or selective opportunity. That's the right. mass screening is never done in prostate cancer. That's right. Okay. okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much, sir. Thank now you. Now the next talk is Dr. Shreniksha. Is laparoscopist alive in 2023? And that's why the conference is being organized here in Ahmedabad. And uh, let's hear from one of the again giant in the laparoscopy. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I welcome all of you on the eighth lab bureau workshop. To be honest, when we did first lab bureau workshop in 2009, we were never sure that we'll go till eighth workshop. But it is, and then the question comes: What is the real? What is the role in as on 2023? As already, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar has mentioned change, evolution is going on. For stone and prostate, it has been standardized. I don't think we do practically open surgery except the rare. So similarly, the minimal invasive and especially certain places where I consider like lab donor nephrectomy. I don't think even though somebody would have uh, available robot, but he would probably go for the lab only. Similarly, many upper tract surgeries, simple nephrectomies, pyeloplasties are still Practically, radical nephrectomies are very well done by the uh, laparoscopy. So, I am not really going into theory much because I think our all three ORs are ready and uh, we would really wish to probably go ahead for live. But I would just like to put certain points which I really, laparoscopy in our country, which is really a very practical thing, uh, the safety, economy and instrumentation. So, reuse of instrumentation. Someone sitting in the periphery anywhere in the country can definitely do the laparoscopy. He needs to probably learn. There are many ways to probably learning and you need the basic. And once you do, we did our first 500 laparoscopy just by doing the basic instruments. We did not even had a harmonic at the time. But as you grow or as things goes on, we can have the, all the equipments. So somebody, I think there may be many residents or those who are starting the things. There are, there are weight labs, dry labs, and then to begin the journey, I believe the simple nephrectomy is not, simple are actually not simple, but we must be even able to find out which are the real simple cases. So maybe like PUJ obstructions, even lower uretric stones, where you don't expect much additions at the level of hilum. So that is how what, in our department, that is what I would say, the first year would assist, the second year would start putting all the ports and the colon mobilization, and third year, I would say by this time, the, those who have already finished five or six months, they would have done independent five, six lap nephrectomies, radical nephrectomies, pyeloplasties on their own completely. Or we would be sitting behind and they would be doing it. So this is actually, we got inspiration. He's a gentleman and we must have some inspiration in the life. We all when went to Ames and we had uh, seen Professor Ralph Clement doing the first, uh, the surgery, especially for what we would have seen and that was an inspiration and then we have a mentor. These are the few people I think in the over the years uh, we used to see those who have attended the earlier workshop in 2009. I remember how Indy Gill really did a mastered all partials even in 11 when he was doing partial in a solitary kidney in a hyla tumor. So these are the few mentors, Professor Gaston. Even today we had an opportunity to see both Rene and Eric did a marvelous job. Mihir I think and Vipul Patel was there in 2009 and Gunter and Ashutosh Tiwari. So it is a time and we must probably go on starting from the, once we learn, we must go on doing it. Then I think in probably 2017 or 18, we started entering into the transplant program and there I think the re real, I would say lab donor is one of the surgery which every resident must uh, have a exposure to probably. That is what we were really making a program because uh, what anatomy you will able to see, no, nothing like, the, especially what, what are the common causes of having a bleeding, I, I would say the simple nephrectomy. Whenever we try to access, if we consider it is a simple nephrectomy and we try to go right, right up to the artery. When we go to the artery, there is a necklace of like the lumbar veins that we must really identify. If we don't really figure out those lumbar veins, that is one of the common cause of uh, bleeding and once you are master about that then I am sure the that you would be able to take care very well Similarly the anatomy on the right side is very different. We must know that gonadal won't be a really trouble or problem over there but the Artery which is behind the bigger vein and that we need to really get, go and get the extra length on right side I think as uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar were saying many of the pioneers are in the this audience 
I distinctly remember in one of the conference where I was in Delhi, right side we have started putting the clips for the right renal vein and I would say uh, almost we did 12 cases but I heard the gentleman who did more than Dr. Professor Anand Kumar like more than almost 200 cases on the right side by putting the clip. You try to lift up the thing, go as close as IVC and you can definitely, not in every gentleman I would say but in majority of cases you can definitely do that. So this is few again I believe are important to uh, no, if you do the basic, this surgery, then you can extend. I remember she was a lady, when she came first time in the OPD, she wanted to donate to her sister and she was kyphoscoliotic. So earlier we really thought of how would be, because there was a 1.5 centimeter space between the 12th rib and the anterior superior iliac spine. We did explain to her that we'll definitely try, we are not sure whether we'll be able to manage laparoscopically. But I can only say that once we could put the ports and the dissection was started, except this was the only problem, first time we used the fan retractor for the colon which was really coming right on the uh, hilum and once we could dissect that out, then whole the surgery was really much simpler. So again, I would say any kind of abnormality uh, like body habitus or that we should really try to go ahead and give advantage to the donor because donor really deserves the highest 